A very good morning and welcome to the Steel Timber Sports Nordic Championship 2022 live from Stenkulen in Sweden. And boy, have we got a program coming up for you guys today. Absolutely unbelievable. We've got the women's competition, the intermediates and of course the rookies. The rookies. And yep. as always, by my side, the big man himself, the one and only Troy Mannery. Welcome. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, glad to be here in Stenkulen in just a little bit outside of Gothenburg in Sweden. And we're looking forward to a really good show oh, yeah. today. Lots of great action, lots of great athletes. It's going to come bombing at you so fast, <laughs> you don't want to blink. <laughs> Talking about not wanting to blink, we've got a man on stage that is Anders Axklo. He's already on fire and ready to rock and roll. Anders, over to you. Well, thank you guys. There is a buzz among the athletes all around backstage getting ready to get on stage because this is the big show coming to town. This is the big show coming to Sweden, to Gothenburg, to Scandinavia. And it's all about in the end who's going to represent Sweden in the World Championships in the end of October. And leading up to there, all the people in the categories wanting to get there and the pro categories coming this afternoon. There is a buzz happening here. Back to you guys. <laughs> so uh, the athletes are getting ready. Of course, Anders is going to send them out on stage. And just like he mentioned, this is a big thing, uh, especially yep. for the Swedes being the host nation of this year's World Championships. And whoever is going to be best today, well, that's, he's going to be representing his country at the World Championships. So, yeah, that's wow. correct. It's a big deal for these guys and girls as well because there's a lot at stake because they're hosting the event at the end of October, as we heard from Anders. Uh, and so there's a lot of pressure on all of these athletes to perform well. And each one of them, each and every one of them knows that there is a mega amount of talent next to them on stage in a lot of the cases. And so we're going to see that there's going to be some heavy competition today. We also have some guest athletes on site. So we're going to see a lot of competition and a lot of uh, talent out there today. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what about uh, this let's call it a new format with rookies, intermediates and women competing more or less at the same time, going through the same disciplines. That's going to be interesting to see. It's, it's quite new and I think fantastic. Well, it makes the day more interesting as well because we have all of these athletes on stage from three different categories that are going to be competing against each other in their individual categories. So it's going to show just how close the, uh, the, the sport is among the the start, we'll, we'll call them the starting athletes and the rookies and the intermediates. And of course, we have our women competing today too. So it's a nice range to have on stage before we put the pros up there later on in the afternoon. Uh, and talking about being close, I don't know if you can hear this, but it's getting loud on stage. Our studio is right next to the stage. So it, you can really feel the tension. You can really see that everybody's getting ready for this big competition. It's going to be a long day, but it's yep. going to be a great day. And I think we can already hear Anders calling in the first athletes. So let's take a look. And, and see what's happening on stage. The vibe is live. All right, here come our first athletes coming up on stage. And of course, ladies first to be gentlemanly. Oh. And our first athlete is Felixia Bank. Big smile on her face, not yeah. only in the picture. She's very, uh, very new to timber sports, but we see her often on uh, Instagram. For instance, as you saw her address her earlier, she does a lot of stuff on Instagram. And of course, Juliana, she's been competing uh, for quite some time now. Yeah, she's an Austrian athlete, Juliana Einfalt. <laughs> I can see Anders already getting excited. Yeah, so. he's getting into it on there. Osa Nordberg first Swede, is yeah. our first Swedish athlete coming up on stage. Next up, we should see Tova Njostat. Absolutely correct. There she is. Uh, uh, second Swedish competitor. And we've got one more athlete coming up, and she is dangerous. She is very dangerous. Uh, her fingers also know how dangerous she is. Uh, Alren Übing from Germany. 
Yeah, she injured herself quite a bit in, in, in Vienna, and yeah. uh, she, she's still she, laughing. She, she, she actually had a glove on her hand so that she could still compete because there was an open wound on her finger. So that uh, tells you all you need to know about the motivation she has to do well. All right, next up, we're going to meet the athletes for our rookie competition. And there's a lot of young talent that's going to be joining our women on stage now. First one from Sweden, Axel Björk. First of 11 competitors. So. Mm -hmm. It's a good field for the rookies this year, actually. Absolutely. A lot of new talent to be seen at this uh, Nordic Championship. Next up, Anton Lindberg coming up on the stage. So we're going to be seeing 23 athletes in total on stage in these three formats wow, or wow. these three uh, levels. Uh, between the women, the rookies, and the intermediates. Now, for those of you who are wondering what intermediates means, because I was also wondering the other day, um, intermediates are athletes that are just getting into the sport, but are older than 24 years old, because a rookie can compete up until 24, and then they have to switch to the pro level if they've got the experience, but those don't have experience, start in the intermediate level, and then can compete there until they're ready for the pros. I mean, it is the original extreme sport, but still, for many, it's uh, something new to start at, at maybe at an older age. And this uh, gives these guys the chance, you know, to get ready to become a pro. And I think uh, it's, it's great to see those intermediates. We've got some big talent there as well. Absolutely. And there we see Robin Konicek from Austria. He's a solid competitor. Oh, very Looking solid, Looking forward yeah. to seeing him on stage later on. Before him was Ebsen Peterson. And now coming up on the stage will be Adam Björns. One thing that you're noticing, and I've mentioned this in several programs in the past, is the athletes that are joining in the sport now and becoming more adept at the sport aren't those big, hulking, monstrous dudes anymore. They're very slight, but they're very wiry and powerful. So this is a good thing to see from the athletic standpoint. Edvind Berglund just coming up on stage now. Now you can see he's not a small guy, but he's not a monster either, you know? Yeah, but he's got that fierce look, doesn't he? Yes, he does. <laughs> All the guys were taking their pictures earlier on, and our <laughs> photographer, Sebastian, was like, okay, one time only, make us mean. <laughs> <laughs> Lukas Wagesreiter, the great hope for Austria, and this will be his final year. No, actually, he has a couple more years. He could participate as a rookie. The question won't. is, his skill level is <laughs> at a point now where he could theoretically jump up into the pro level. Yeah, um, I talked to him earlier, that's what he wants to do. Like you yeah. said, this should be his last season as a rookie this, this should be his going over to, uh, to the pros. And he loves the competition. Yes, he is a fierce competitor. Now, coming on stage, Albin Nielsen. And of course, you'll always see if they do have an Instagram or a Twitter account, you'll see their hashtag or their ats, their links, so you can follow them and keep up with what the athletes are doing. Here's a great name, Bo Anderson. <laughs> and look at the smile on his yeah. face. From Denmark. Oh, but, smile but as for he the comes picture. on, yeah. right there, <laughs> Rrr, I'm coming for yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Better watch out. Here comes Bo Anderson. So two more to go, two sweets. Yep. First up of the last two will be Johan Staff. He was really stretching in, in preparation. This uh, guy yeah. is. I mean, you uh, have to. This you guy have is to. fit. You have to start that procedure early. And I can tell you from my own experience, if you do not prepare properly before any of these sports, in particular when you're doing this, you're, uh, you're going to really suffer. Now, just coming up on stage, Edvin Carlson. He is one of those guys that the Swedes are looking forward to stepping into the next phase of his career shortly. He's a solid competitor and one of the favorites here today. Yeah, having won the Rookie Cup 2022, he is definitely a face uh, to watch out for. All right, next will be our intermediate athletes. And as I said earlier, this is athletes, or these are athletes that are 24 or older that are just getting into the sport. So this is their opportunity to start cutting their teeth in timber, timber sports. And uh, coming on stage now, Bart Givers. I tell you what, I'm really happy we've got this massive stage for, yeah, for all 23 athletes. Yeah. This is a big, big competition today. Next up, Johan Siegerstedt waiting there to come on. 
Hey, you've got your haircut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we have the same barber. <laughs> I mean, and look at the scenery. I mean, they come out of the woods, you know, <laughs> literally on the stage. So oh, what about that missing picture? Missing a picture on that one, unfortunately, but we just saw him coming on stage. And then we'll have next up Kim Volke. Oh, we can already hear and feel yeah. the saws being... The vibe is starting to increase in the background as the uh, saws are getting warmed up. There we see Klaus Magnus Halverson. Oh, excuse me, Kim Volke is, uh, I just said that, Kim Volke. After him will be Klaus Magnus Halverson. So now, as you see, there are some guest athletes out there, but because this is the Nordic Championships, we do have Norwegian athletes in the mix. So if a Norwegian athlete does win in the pro level, and the next closest Swede will both be going on to the World Championships in October. If I'm the, the, correct me the, if I'm the, wrong. The Swede for sure. The, the Norwegian sure. most no probably. We still have to wait for the other national competition. Yeah. But if he stays in the top seven, which he definitely would be after having won the Nordic Championships, correct. There's a great chance of, uh, of him going there as well. So, so it is important for everyone competing yes. today. Yeah. Peter Eriksson just coming up on stage there. Oh, look at look at the lineup. That's There's a big group of people <laughs> up there. Have you seen anything like it before? I haven't. Nope. Emil Svensson. Now joining them on stage. There'll be one more intermediate athlete. And, uh, oh yeah, I was talking with Emil yesterday. Nice dude. We were teasing him about being uh, the better looking Swede <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of the two that were standing with me at the time. But it was a good laugh about that. And then Victor Klarmo coming up on stage. So we have our orders set up already for the heats coming up. We have our athletes on stage there. We'll get one final look before we jump back to the studio here. I'm looking forward to this, Marcus. It's oh, going to be definitely. a fun day, Floaty. I mean, just, just, just look at that picture. We, we, we've got the wood. We've got the big <laughs> stage. We've got the intermediates. We've got the rookies. We've got the women up there. It's uh, going to be one fun-packed day of steel timber sports. <laughs> and, and Anders Axlow, he is already on fire. And it's, yep. it's a Saturday morning. And our <laughs> stage moderator, as Anders, as you said, is on fire. But he has probably one of the best names for a steel timber sports stage moderator ever. Axlow. Axlow. Best yeah, name yeah. ever. So fantastic that we've got the good group here today ready to go. So how about that? Everything is set. We are ready to rock yep. and roll. And of course, we're going to start with the ladies. So yep. I think we should take a closer look at, at the women's format because we've got stock store, standing block chop, single puck and underhand chop coming up for the intermediates and the rookies. For the rookies, yeah. And uh, three disciplines for the women's competition. And we'll take a closer look at that right now. The Steel Timber Sports women's competition. All athletes will compete in three disciplines. The maximum points awarded for each discipline result from the number of participating athletes. The first discipline is the stock saw. The fastest athlete will receive points equal to the total number of athletes competing down to one point for the last place in each discipline. The second event is the single buck. Points remain the same awarded based on the times and as with all events, any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. In the final discipline, the underhand chop, it's the athlete's last chance to claim valuable points. The points from all disciplines are accumulated and the athlete with the highest points total wins the competition. So very much looking forward for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, we also have the rookies and the intermediates. The intermediates yep. And it's just a little different, but of course we want to explain that as well. They have one extra discipline for the rookies and intermediates, so let's take a look at that now. The Steel Timber Sports Rookie Competition. All athletes will compete in four disciplines. The maximum points awarded for each discipline result from the number of participating athletes. The first discipline is the stock saw. The fastest athlete will receive points equal to the total number of athletes competing down to one point for the last place in each discipline. The second event is the standing block chop. Points remain the same, awarded based on times, and as with all events, any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. 
As the third discipline, every competitor will need to show their skill in the single buck. And in the underhand chop, it's the athlete's last chance to claim valuable points. The points from all disciplines are accumulated and the athlete with the highest point total wins the competition. Very well explained. Thank you very much, Troy. <laughs> so we're going to start off with the women. We're going to start off with the stock saw and Stocks everything up. you need to know about tool and discipline is coming up right now. The steel MS661 CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark, one downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. So we have three heats coming up, starting mm -hmm. with uh, Felixia Bank going all by herself. That's in rough. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. In heat two, Juliana Enfalten and Asa Nordberg. And in heat three, finally, Tove Njastad and Iron Übing. Yeah, we just saw Alrun run by the front of the studio here as she's <laughs> heading up to the stage to cut her uh, first pair of cookies. Now, we are going to go through all of these three uh, um, um, groups, so it's going to be the women first, then the rookies and the intermediates. They all, all cut stock saw, and then we'll switch the stage up for the next discipline, but right now we're focusing on the work that they'll be doing on stage with that stock saw. Now, this saw that they're using is exactly the same saw that you can buy at your local I love steel that. dealership, and it's You've not told me been so modified many times. at all. <laughs> and I still love it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And I mean, this is, this is, uh, it's not it's not a test of the machinery or anything. We know that uh, the saw pretty much works flawlessly every single time. It's about the skill of the operator and whether or not the operator can hear the saw bogging down or hear the engine revving properly and, and what's happening on the, on the, with the machine and also the amount of pressure they're placing on the saw. So oh, yeah. We're going to see different, uh, different styles and different skills out there with this particular instrument in hand. What about Felixia now having to go first and all by herself? Do you think that's an advantage or <sighs> that's does it make it even tougher? That's a call right there because being on stage by yourself, you don't have that adrenaline push of another athlete up there, even though it's not about who wins the heat, it's about the time that you cut the two cookies in. She uh, seems relaxed though. It seems uh, like, you know, it might be a little bit more pressure, but she seems yeah, to be, yeah, like hold. you say, pretty relaxed about the situation, but she's done a lot of work with the, Nate, with the steel saws thing. anyway, so um, she's ready for this, I think, and it's going to be no problem for her. So oh. just waiting for our, yeah, there we see. Oh, but Jansen, yeah. Uh, get the heads up. Okay, we just been informed that uh, his microphone is not connecting to the trailer and he definitely needs that in order to be able to communicate with Competition Control Center as well as with our audience here on uh, the in front of the stage. But so Anders' microphone is obviously working, so he's, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's keeping everybody updated. But uh, like, like you said, I mean, all those technical <coughs> issues are very, very important for, for steel timber sports. Because yeah. sometimes we have uh, slow motions really showing us precise moments of, of yeah. uh, DQ or not DQ. And, and uh, this all has to work. This all has to get together to make well, this sport uh, as precise as it is. That's where our technical leader, Schul Janssen, he'll be in competition control. And in our competition control, they have multiple screens and I don't know if we'll get a picture of that later on at some point if we do great if not it's no big deal uh, but on stage we also have not just our normal cameras for the show but we do have multiple high-speed cameras on stage in order to be able to see 
Did the athletes start too early? Were the athletes' hands in the right position on top of the block? We used to say hands on the wood, now it's stand to your timber. And there's a line on the top of the wood where the hands have to be on top of, and all the fingers, all the digits have to be over top of that line. So and it's always like, wait for it, Marcus, and watch the slow motion. Thing. We can see it, and it's yep. like, Exactly. Millimeters, it's, it's a thousandth of a second sometimes that make the big difference. Yeah. Exactly, and so they'll be able to see really within one thousandth of a second on the pictures if they've moved before the gunshot or the starting go. So uh, that's, it's a huge, huge undertaking. And Shul Janssen and his crew in Competition Control Center, as well as our judges on stage, are making sure that everything is as fair as possible. And then, of course, the technicians taking care of the saws and all our camera guys and all that put together to bring you a really fair competition. Uh, and that's why we're happy to wait. You know, no, yep. no problem about that. By the way, we've got uh, upcoming competitions on there as well uh, for everybody to enjoy. As you can see, we're live now with the Nordic Pro Championship here in Steinkullen. Um, a bit later today, we're going to see the pros. On the mm -hmm. 4th of September, the German Pro Championship. 10th of September, the Swiss Pro Championship. European Nations Cup on the 11th. That's going to be a good one. That's uh, really I, I fun. Very much looking forward to that. And of course, on the 28th of October, Team World Championship, just around the corner here in mm -hmm. Gothenburg. And on the 29th, for me, this is like the big climax at the end of the year, the individual world championship here in yeah. Gothenburg. And that's going to be a big one as it's hosted here, like you say, just around the corner in the city. And uh, it's going to be a massive undertaking and a massive event. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how it folds, unfolds today, who's going to be going and joining the athletes that we already know from other countries that are going to be there at the world championships at the end of our season. And then... You know, uh, the, we go through Christmas time and New Year and the start the whole thing all over again in the New Year in yes, February, March, yes, and April. Yes, so I'm very it's much just looking a non-stop thing for us, which is great. S seen a lot of European athletes this year. I've not seen so many overseas uh, athletes compete. So the World Championship is going to be very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to that just to see Where's Europe, you know, where's the USA, Australia, New Zealand, you know, everything coming together. So we did have a sneak preview in Vienna at the World Trophy of oh, wow. some of the international athletes. Oh, so wow. we do know there's some solid talent coming <laughs> from the USA, from Canada, from Australia, New Zealand. We always expect Australia and New Zealand to be super solid. Absolutely. But it was really surprising how good they look this year at the trophy. So it's going to be great at the individual yeah. world championship as well. Market in your calendar yes. and um, get ready for the world championship as we're getting ready for the first heats all right we can so hear, the, hear saw. the saw being warmed up now on stage oh yeah she looks very relaxed yeah how about that no for some pressure extra pressure yeah you're out by yourself um, technical issues oh but now we're ready to rock stand to your timber three two one steel timber go. sports nordic championship off we go there's the first cuts of the day all right, that's a really thin Ooh. cookie, and it looks like she might have a cutout there, so the judges will look at that closely. And I mean, the idea, oh, and she noticed it as oh, well, yeah. so she's going for a third cookie. That's going to really ah. hurt her time, but she cut out on the third cookie as well. You can see how massive that second cookie is, and uh, already she's uh, pointing it out uh, to Bart Janssen, our head judge on stage there, and it looks like this may be a DQ. Let's see. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, that is a shame for Felixia Bank because she does have quite a lot of experience with the saw in hand. However, not in a competition format. So learning about this competition oh. format is the main thing here in this case. And this is just an experience. And you can see if we get a slow-mo of that, that first cookie was incredibly thin. It was almost paper thin. And if she had a complete cookie there, that oh, would have been, been a, a fantastic cookie because we so always true. say so true. thin to win. But that second cookie was just a massive beast. And you could see the angle on that log. It was just too much and she cut out. And uh, she just didn't have a, a clean third cut in order to be able to get that as a counting cut. So this is going to be a DQ for her. And our first DQ of the day, unfortunately, on our first heat of the day, it makes it a little bit difficult. Uh, but uh, what a way to start. So we've got two competitors coming on stage now. Juliana Einfalt and Asa Norberg. As you mentioned already, uh, Juliana from Austria, just mm -hmm. being a guest here today. Just enjoying the competition, <laughs> getting herself into the groove. 
So now we see these, uh, both of these women have personal bests about just over 13 seconds. That's a really respectable time. Uh, if we've got Goodwood out there and if we've got some really good luck and maybe a bit of a melon, uh, we might see some good times. A personal best is always nice to see broken because that means there's improvement happening along the way through the training. But uh, Juliana Einfeld, a uh, very solid competitor here. I have yet to see Osa Nordberg, Nordberg excuse me, uh, compete, so we'll see how she stands up against our Austrian competitor there. And you're absolutely right. It's something different if you're used to the saw, but if suddenly a cameraman is focusing on you, mm -hmm. if, if the crowd is looking at you, if you have to wait for some technical issue, that's competition. It's a lot of pressure as well, well if you think about it. You know, you've got the weight of your country on your shoulders. Stand to your timber. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! All right, that's a nice solid start by both of our women on stage. You can see Juliana has a bit of an angle in her cut, so she's going to have to be careful on that up cut. Osa, oh, wow. wow, she was a really slow first cut, but she's making sure she's solid with it. And that might be wow. a personal best for Juliana Einfeld there. 13.21 is the unofficial time at the moment. Osa Nordberg with two good cookies by the looks of it on deck, so we should have our first official good cuts and some times in the books. And you're right, if that time is confirmed, that would be a personal best for Juliana. <laughs> Look at the smile on her face. Yeah, she, she knows, knows she knows, yeah. Yes, 13.06 for Juliana, oh, even so a better. very nice wow. improvement. A personal best for her. Osa Nordberg off pace by 1.87 seconds, but uh, I think, you know, under the circumstances, she can be allowed to have a little bit of the nervous butterflies going on in her stomach at the moment. But Currently, she's sitting in second place, just behind Juliana Einfeld, as we take a look back at the slow-mo ever so briefly, as we uh, get ready to bring our next two athletes up on stage, as our stage crew prepares those blocks and gets ready to go. And Doc saw heat number three with Tova Neustadt and Alren Übing. Uh, by the way, Juliana's personal best used to be 13.94. Mm -hmm. Now we have 13.06, so that is quite an improvement. It's a mega improvement, so that's fantastic. Oh, and I just love the sound. <laughs> I just love the sound of the source. For all you gas heads out there, this is the perfect event. And in the pros later on, we'll see the... Uh, the uh, hot saw, which is also fantastic for all you motorcycle freaks or, or engine freaks out there because those things are loud and yeah. fast and dangerous. Perfect. I mean, we enjoy you watching us uh, live on the stream, but you got to see and hear this knife on stage. Uh, I, I, I can't describe it. You, yeah, you, it's you a different to, animal altogether. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not just the noise. It's, it's everything you feel, all those vibrations and uh, yeah. Uh, and there is a fan base for Steel Timber Sports like you wouldn't believe. I mean, they are rabid, the fans for, for Steel Timber Sports. <laughs> well, so Sports. are we. <laughs> Absolutely. But our rabidity is a little bit different. <laughs> it's just old age and grumpiness. <laughs> All right, there we see Alren Übing. She's got uh, the national record, actually, for stocks. Saw her personal best, 906. Did I read that right? Yep, 960, 9.60. That's a very solid time. Make sure that chain break is off for Tova Neustadt. There we go. It's an important safety aspect for these saws to make sure that uh, that chain stops immediately if something untoward happens. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Very nice oh, wow. start by Alrin there. Tova also with a good start. She's got a nice clean cut going on. You can see she's a bit deeper with the motor of the saw. And it's a great transition <laughs> to the up cut. Whoa, this is How a great about cut. that? For <laughs> Look at that cut by Tova. That is a fantastic cut and a huge improvement for her. 12.15 and a personal best. And it has even been corrected down to 11.99 under wow. 12 seconds. Can you dig it? Yeah, I mean, that's great. Going from her previous personal best of 12.26 to an 11.99, that's amazing. And that, of course, puts her into first place. Yep. So there we go. Personal best for Tova <laughs> as well as for Juliana Einfeld. 
And uh, Alrin Ubing currently sitting in second place. So she's in good stand at the moment to be able to make some moves in there. Um, unfortunately for Felixia Bank, she got that DQ, but she has two more opportunities to come back and gain more points. So she's not out just yet. Let's not count her out. Definitely not. We've seen five athletes, two personal bests. Yep. That's what I call a start into the competition. That's a good start right there. The only thing that would have made it a little bit better is if all of the athletes had had complete cookies. And unfortunately, like we said off the top, that first DQ is, uh, you know, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth. But now we're moving on to the stocks off for Indeed our we rookies. Are. Indeed we are. So we're going to start with Heat 1. And uh, of course, we're going to see Axel Björk and Anton Lindberg in a Swedish heat. Espen Pedersen and Robin Konicek in heat number two. Adam Björns and Edwin Berglund in heat three. Again, two Swedish athletes uh, competing. Then we move on to Lukas Vagesreiter and Albin Nilsson in heat four. In heat five, we're going to see Bo Andersen compete all by himself. All by himself. And in the final heats, again, two Swedes, Johan Staff and Edwin Carlson. And we're ready for heat number one. Yep. And I had uh, Anders came over to me earlier and he says, yeah, Axel Björk, his last name actually means Birch. So <laughs> yeah. it's perfect, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, it looks like we've got some different names on our... Uh... Yeah. That is not what our list says there. I don't believe that's Edwin Berglund, so I'm hoping that our list is correct, and uh, we'll see. All right, so nevertheless, on stage, ready for the first heat. So based on our starting order here, we should have Axel Björk in stand one on the left-hand side of your stage and Anton Lindberg on stand two on the right-hand side as these athletes standing tall on their blocks getting ready stand to cut. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! That is a massive thick cookie for the first cut on Axel Björk's side. And struggling on that up cut. Wow, that's that a, was close a close finish. One, and that is a, a close it's finish. It's a very thin finish on the top of the right hand side there for Anton Lindberg, I believe. We're going to clarify the names for you in just a second, but we've got a really thin cookie, and it might even be an incomplete disc as the judges will take a close look at it. There it is. And that's a problem right there. I hate to see that. Yeah. So it is in fact Axel Björk who had the full pull and a personal best of 12.67. Anton Lindbergh with a disqualification because of an incomplete disc. And this is where you see the skill level and the operator's skill and experience above all is really playing a huge role here as being able to line up that saw. We were at the uh, the Rookie Academy earlier on in the year and we and we saw Hans Ove Hansen who is an expert in this discipline teaching the guys how to line up the saw by lining it up with their nose and, and not stepping back and stepping in as they make their uh, cut adjustments because that changes the angle of the saw. So all of these different things can I get all yeah, active when yeah, I'm trying uh, to explain no, no, this but, stuff. But, that, but that's how it all works. of these things yeah. play a huge role in how well you cut and how clean your cookies are. And we've just seen a personal best uh, from Axel yeah, Björk. That's so always good. Well done, mate. All right, next up we have Ebsen Peterson and Robin Konacek. Robin Konacek is a premium athlete when it comes to stock saw. So let's see if he can keep that level up here uh, against a Norwegian in Ed Ebsen Espen Peterson. You can see some very good personal best by both of these guys here. And we know that Robin's been working on this discipline quite a lot in order to improve. Espen Peterson, personal best of 11.54. Robin Konacek with a personal best of 11.81. So Danish Dynamite versus Austrian Power. And this could be a really close one. And you can see how quickly and easily those saws start up, get them warmed up, get them running. Leaving them running for the stock saw, and you can see these specially designed pads on the Stand ground to so your that the timber. saws don't dance away on them. Three, two, one, go! Power. Oh, that's a great wow. start by yes. Pedersen. 
Really nice start. Peterson's got a nice first cut by the looks of it. Oh, man, barely any transition at all. Now there's a huge knot part in that block by Robin Ooh. Konacek. Now they might look at that and they'll have to adjust for the fact that there's that big knot there and uh, allow him for that to make sure that he's got a complete cookie. And it looks like they're actually going to take that into consideration. It'll be okay. Yeah, I would guess so. But let's wait for Bart Janssen. Yeah, oh. they saw that. Yeah. No, no problem. So good run by both of these guys, 12.44 and a 12.47. Robin Konacek, the fastest cut so far today with a 12.44. So that puts him at the moment at the top of the rankings for Stocksaw, just ahead of Espen Peterson and then Axel Björk and Anton Lindberg. But we still do have quite a few athletes to go in this discipline. Coming up next, we have Adam Bjuns and Edvin Berglund coming up. So All just right. like you mentioned, still quite a number of athletes yep. still to come, but I think that was a great start for the rookies and we can already see where we're heading to. Yep, 11 rookies in the competition today. We've got four done and dusted, so we've got a few more to go. So, and, and this is the beauty, we're in the first round, so there's still a lot of action still to come. These guys still have a few more rounds to go, so these positions will switch, they'll alter, they'll change <laughs> yeah, as the points are gained through each one. And just to remind you folks, the yes. head-to-head -head battles that you see on stage <laughs> is not about who wins that particular heat, it's about who has the fastest heat. So you could be in heat number five with the fastest time alone and be at the top of the leaderboard and or be, you know, in heat number one with the slowest time and have won that heat or the second slowest time. A lot time of maths won that going on, but don't worry, we'll keep yeah. you updated. <laughs> yeah. It's getting confusing We've got now. To calculate I'm just talking this myself up. into a hole. <laughs> All right, so up on I'm stage. I'm with you, I'm with you, Troy, Adam totally. Bjorns and Edwin Berglund. Oh, look at that. Precision. That's what it's all about, just like you mentioned. Yeah, and this is one of those things that is very helpful for these athletes to be able to really make sure that they're lining their cuts up properly. And those personal bests, by the way, they're exactly the same. 12.44. Okay, gentlemen. Four. Warm up your saw. No, that's what we oh, need that's for, the for the lead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I read that too and I was like, wait, wow, wow that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is still cool, but uh, go for it. <laughs> yeah, Edwin Berglund, who is on the right-hand side of your stage, has a Athletes personal best of 14. Ready. Adam Stand is a little bit better timber. with a 12.30, but that doesn't Three, mean anything once two, you're one, in the action. Go! Adam Jones with a nice start. His first cut, oh, you can see very deep cookie. with the motor. The transition for Berglund was a big swing down and aligning the thing up to make sure he's really clean. Uh, and both of them look like they have clean cuts there. Nothing over the line, no cutouts, solid cookies on the deck. So let's see what our judge says at the end of the day. And that would be the best cut of the day so far. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both cuts are good. Lovely. All right. So Adam Bjorns with an 1191, a solid cut for him. And... Berglund as well, Edwin Berglund getting a nice personal best time of 14.16. And again, we see the improvement, although it's not as fast as the faster times here today. It's, uh, it's an improvement, so that's a step in the right direction. And Adam Bjorns takes over the ranking in the stock saw so far for our rookies. And there you see Adam up top with Robin in second and Peterson in third place for the moment. But like I said, there's a lot you of things that are going to change here. <laughs> so the crowd is happy. We've got a Swede up on the top. But some real tough competitors still to come. I yes. Lucas Vargas right, they're going to be in the next heat. And heat of course, number four with uh, Albin Nielsen. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Staffan Carlsen also still to come. So. Yeah. So we've got a lot of action still to come your way with a lot of different athletes from around the world here. So that's something else that we're big on with Steel Timber Sports, isn't it? Uh, totally. A lot of love, a lot of tolerance, um, and they're all in it, all together.
I'm not sure if you guys were able to hear that, but... I uh, don't know either. We didn't hear it, but hopefully you did. Some really uh, nice words. Yep, very important aspect in the, today's world that, uh, you know, we, we just work with each other, we support each other, because the way things are going out there, we need each other's help as much as possible these days, so tolerance is always important. Tough competitors, but great friends. Correct. All right, next heat coming up, we're going to have Lukas Fagerstreiter and Alden Nielsen. Now, we've seen Lukas doing great things oh, yeah. in his career so far, and he's making that next step. He did say to you that he wants to move yeah, on yeah. to the next level quickly. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that's uh, going to be the last season we're going to see him compete as a rookie because he wants to turn pro. And, and when Lukas gets this into his head, mm. he's the kind of guy, he's going to do it. Yeah, you know, he's he, going to fight for it. Nothing is going to stop him, I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely sure. So today it's going to be very interesting to see how good is he on the top rookie level and how far away or how close is he to get to be one of the pros. So today, for, I think for Lukas, and that's the reason why he came to Sweden as an Austrian, to see and to find out where he is on his way to the professional status. Yeah, I mean, it's every chance to compete, every chance to see how you rank against other athletes oh, yeah. is always an opportunity where you can say, hmm, I maybe need one more season here at the rookie level, or yeah, I think Do I a can few more jump up to the next you know, level, gets, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you could see that you're just way miles ahead of the other guys in this group, then okay, maybe it's time for you to step away and let others step into that position and then try and cut your teeth at the pro level, but Lucas is definitely there. I mean, his skill level is right up there with the best in Austria. He's got some of the best in Austria as mentors, so we're going to see good things from Lucas <laughs> in the next little while because he is a compact, solid, and very motivated competitor. And we're back on stage. We're ready for the next heat, uh, and the man we just talked about is on the left-hand side. And, of course, uh, the man he's competing against, Albin Nielsen. Don't underestimate this guy. So personal best for Lucas is 10.68. For Albin Nielsen, it's 12.23. The top time so far in this competition by Adam Björns is 11.91. So we might just now see a change on the leaderboards, but uh, he still needs to cut. And we're ready to go. So there's the whistle. Okay, gentlemen, warm up yourself. This is a practice move from Lucas as well, just to make sure that he's got his alignment exactly right. He knows exactly where he needs that saw, where Athlete he wants that saw. Ready. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Very tentative start by both athletes. Lucas, ooh, he's got a thin cut on the up. I'm not sure if he's aware that he's cut out on that. No, he's not aware, and that's gonna be a DQ for him. He thinks he's got a good time, but I don't think he's seen that second cookie as a cutout, ooh, ooh. and that's gonna cost him. It's going to be a DQ, and he just oh. seen it now. He could have gone back and done a third cut, but he didn't notice it because it was oh, on the see, other side. He was so of happy with the time. Gentlemen, stand oh, two. Look at him, he's shaking good. his head. Stand one, Understandably. Happy, but unfortunately, DQ, incomplete disc. Uh, that is unfortunate for Lucas because we know he's so solid in this discipline. It was just a small problem right off the hop for him. So let's take a look here, there. But these are the competitions you need. These yes. are exactly the things that make the difference between a rookie and a pro. Yep. At the end of the day, because the time would have been awesome. Yes, it would have been great. Unfortunately for him, he cut out. And uh, Nielsen with a 13.50, oh, 1.59 seconds off pace, sitting there in fifth place in Stocksaw at the moment. 
All right, so an unfortunate situation for Lucas there as we talked him up so crazy, but it happens. It's competition, and his thing is he always wants to try and get that thin first cookie to make the cut clean, and unfortunately it cost him, and he didn't notice it as uh, we see our next athlete ready to go. Bo Anderson getting ready to go on stage. He looks so mean there, <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah. such a nice kid. But wait kid. for the smile. Oh, yeah. no, smile is no gone. No smile now. He's concentrated. <laughs> I, and, and honestly, I, I'd rather be on stage with uh, another competitor. I have to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's so difficult all by yourself, having that big scenery. I mean, you've, you've got that massive uh, TV screen behind you. You've got camera people running around you. You've got the crowd watching you. And... You're out there all by yourself, and you know they're focusing on you, not on the other one as well. You couldn't say they share the intention. No. Even though you're competing against the clock, regardless of whether you're on stage up there alone or with another athlete, having the other athlete on stage Whoa. makes it a little bit less about the clock and more about the guy that's in front of you. At the end of the day, though, you have to cut your cut and not anybody else's cut. So, yeah, I agree with you. I would rather be on stage with other athletes. But if the uh, chance is there for me to try and improve, I'll take it every Stand time, no matter to how. your timber. Three, two, one, go! Ooh, quick cut. <laughs> Getting in there right fast, quick in a hurry to get that soft place. Oh, he's got ah. a bit of a cut out there, but he noticed it quickly. Resets the saw for the up cut. He's a bit slow, struggling to try and find the right balance of pressure to not bog that motor down, but it looks like he corrected in time, so he's got a slow time, but he should have two complete discs. Ah, but did he go outside the line? I'm sure we're gonna find out in just okay, a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the cut's good. Oh, oh well done. Relief. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, Bo Anderson. Not just for Bo, but for us as know, well. For us as well, right? We never like to see the guys get DQ'd, nah. come on. All right, so let's see if we can see a slow-mo on that one and what happened there on the upcut. Ah. He was very quick on his transition from down to up, and that's what happened. He was just a little bit too imprecise. But, but what I don't understand, he was so fast to react. That was great. Yep. And he still got stuck on his way up. Yeah, he was, I think he was putting a bit too much pressure. It, you'll see sometimes the athletes really leaning into the saw like this. And if you're not familiar with the machine, if you're not familiar with the way that it sounds when it's bogging down, you might not realize what's happening. The chain slows down and then you get close to stalling the saw. So that's a problem. Oh, wow. Look at the personal bests from uh, Staff and Carlson. Oh, yes. Edwin Carlson is very solid in this discipline. In fact, I think, now don't quote me on this, but I think he might have actually had for a very short time the rookie world record in this discipline. Not 100% sure, and I'll have to double check that, but uh, he's a very solid Sawyer with this stock saw in hand. Okay, gentlemen, warm up your saw. Well, talk about determination. Yes. Johan Staff as well. I mean, you see his personal best time is pretty solid. 10.62. So, athletes <laughs> ready. Stand to yeah, your timber. Yeah, this is the Nordic Championship. You're competing Three, at two, home. One, go. Whew. Great start oh, by yes. Johan Staff wow. and Edwin Carlson. Look at the difference in styles, though. Edwin Carlson barely moving his body at oh, all. That transition oh, but look to the upcut was fantastic. Wow. Wow, great time by both of them. Not personal best by any stretch of the imagination, and Edwin seems a little bit disappointed with that, actually. <laughs> but uh, I think we have good cookies all around. Let's hope so, at least. Uh-oh, looks like we may have a cut line. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one. Okay, stand two. DQ, cut line. Ah, oh, that's a shame. And Carlson knew it. I think yeah. that's what he was putting his hands on mm. his head about because he realized he cut over the line on the transition to the upcut. He was so fast, but he was so fast he got way too far over. It would have been the best time of the day so far. Yeah, it would have been, definitely. Unfortunately for him, it uh, didn't work out. But uh, Adam Bjorns at the moment at the top of the leaderboard with an 1191. Johan Staff, who just cut sitting in second place with a 12.02. So far, so good, except for a couple of DQs. We're having a good competition here today, and it's gonna just 
continue to improve as we move on to the next disciplines. Before that, though, we Let's have to do the, the intermediates. Ranking. Yep. So we're sticking with the stock saw, and there we see our lineup and the DQs at the bottom cut over the line and two incomplete cookies there. So Björns and Staff, two Swedish athletes right mm -hmm. on top, receiving yeah. 11 and 10 points. And um, Robin Konacek right there in the top three yeah. in stock saw for the rookie so far, so good results for him. He's got a chance to uh, make some improvements here. <laughs> Women's, rookies, over and to the, the intermediates. intermediates. <laughs> Let's take a look at the start list. All right, not as many in the intermediates, and uh, we're going to see Gavers on stage, Bart Gavers up there, all by his lonesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's, what's happening? And of course, we've got Johan Segerstedt and uh, Kim Wolke in heat number two, Klaus Magnus Halfersen against Peter Eriksson in heat number three, and then finally heat number four with Emil Svensson and Victor Klarmo. So uh, those intermediates, to me, are going to be the most interesting thing to see today because yeah. I hardly know any of the athletes because they have only joined. Their age maybe gives them some extra strength, some extra athleticism. And uh, yeah, let's watch out what Bart Gavers is able to do with a personal best of 10.61. Yeah, the um, world record isn't far off either. <laughs> I was just uh, going to say. He, he's close at the uh, intermediate world record uh, at 10.34. So uh, it is 10.34, correct? Uh, so, yeah, Bart Gaver is on stage all by himself okay. and getting ready for Warm the stock saw cut. And given that the world record is uh, that close to his time, you know, if he has a good cut today, uh, he may be able to celebrate in a big, big way. Well, fingers crossed. Athlete ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Really good opportunity for you to hear that saw as well. Oh, and it bogged down a bit too much. That chain stalled, and that's exactly what I was talking about. Applying too much pressure can cause problems, and that did cause some problems. The chain stopped, but he managed to get it started again and continue the cut. Looks like everything will be okay for him. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Good, good. Yeah, Thumbs and I think that's, uh, that's uh, the way you want to start into the competition. You just don't want to get a DQ right yeah. at, the, at the first discipline. And uh, There it is, that chain oh, yeah. stop. The problem yeah. is that you want to start into the competition and not have the DQ, but you also want to get into the competition <laughs> with a good, a good time. time. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's that balancing act between do I really go for it or I play it safe here and make sure I've got some points. Uh, and we've got different characters like in any other sport. You know, some say, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to go for it. The others say, okay, let's start slowly yep. into the competition. And we've seen that both strategies work out. Yeah, and we've seen so, both so strategies uh, <laughs> kick the guys in the butt a little bit <laughs> as well, you know? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. All right, next heat coming up. Johan against Kim. Johan Segerstedt, personal best of 12.17. Kim Volke a little bit better on the personal best with an 11.32. So uh, right now the time to beat for the lead is 12.43 seconds set by Bart Gavers. Let's see how these two guys line up against each other. I think this is the moment where you feel everything gets mm. okay, so gentlemen. much more quiet than the rest of the warm day. Warm up the Just before the warming of, up of the souls, it's uh, one of my favorite moments. You can see that pile of sawdust that uh, starts Athlete to accumulate as ready. the day goes by in the Stare background. Easy. to it's your crazy. timber. Three, two, one, go! Very nice start there by Johan Segerstedt, who we are looking at there is Kim Volke, his angle. Oh, big swing on the transition to the upcut for Kim and Johan Segerstedt with a solid 12.37. Kim, by Very virtue solid, of that yeah. huge swing, has a slower time of 14.30. And that's really hard, you know. When you come out of the bottom of that block, the weight of the saw as well as the pressure that you're applying to it, okay, if you don't have absolute okay, control, to Both transition to the upcut, that can happen and you can swing away. My favorite sentence from Bart Janssen, by the way. Both cuts are good, are good yeah. yeah. Puts, a, puts a smile on everybody's face. Uh, yeah. We've seen three athletes so far. 
and uh, Sigiste puts himself up into the lead. Yeah, good job by him, just ahead by 20, uh, 20 tenths of a second, um, or two tenths of a second, I would say, two tenths of a second. Yep, yep. I'm not a math him. guy. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> But great. I mentioned that sawdust that was in the background. There's huge <laughs> yeah. piles of it. There's all this extra wood, and a lot of people might be asking, well, what the heck? You guys are just being completely wasteful and everything. This no, is all sustainably grown yeah, yeah. Uh, wood. This is all very well controlled how this is used in the end of the day. We'll have more about that a little bit later on in our show so that uh, you understand exactly what's going on with the wood that's used here. But before that, we've got lots of action coming your way with Klaus Magnus Halversen from Norway going up against Peter Eriksson. 100 Ks on 1.89 meters. Strong guy. He's a big boy. Also with a good personal best time of 11.27. Oh, the way he looks at that wood. He hates it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, warm up your soul. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Very nice start by both of these guys. Nice and even by that first cut by the looks of it. Halverson's a little bit quicker, the transition to the up cut. Oh, that is thin to win. He's got to be careful here. That is a fantastic up cut by <laughs> Halverson. The time's still running for him and finally stops with an 11.96 and 11.76. Both of them very good times. But that second cookie was unbelievably thin for Halverson. I've never seen a cookie that thin that's been clean. But it didn't have much space left because the first cookie was so thick. It was, okay, man. Gentlemen. Boat gets it good. Oh, yes. And he had a heavy angle. If you could just barely see it, almost looks like a wedge to stop a truck. <laughs> uh, so that angle can be problematic if you're not careful. But that second cookie of his oh, was fantastically wow. thin. Oh, we're getting this slow. Man. Maybe look at the size of that cookie. That is a beast. Woo. Add some chocolate chips and you've got a Granny Smith going down. <laughs> Right, so Ericsson and Halverson, nice. That's, changes, uh, changes, Halverson changes. Was a, a good second cut. Uh, they say thin to win, and a lot of people are like, well, what? Thin to win? You what does always that say mean? that, yeah. I say it, but a lot of people say it, and the reason behind that is because the thinner the cookie is, there's less material to drag on the chain or on the single buck saw, for instance. So uh, the thinner sensible. you can make that cookie, but still keeping it a safe, clean cut, the better it's going to be because it's not binding so much on your instrument. So that's our final heat in the intermediate competition. Victor... Clarmo with the national record for stock saw with a great 10-7-1. That's okay, impressive. Gentlemen, warm up your saw. Did I read that right? Because his personal best says 1408 on my screen, so I might have that wrong. The personal best for Emil Svensson is a 10-7-1, and that's the national record. So Emil Svensson should be our national record holder. Let's see how they do it. Ready. Stand to my, your my timber. My statistics confirm Three, that. Yes, Emil Svensson with a personal pest of 10.71. Nice start by both of these gentlemen. Oh, that's a very precise cut. That's a good cookie too. Nice oh. transition by Svensson on the up cut. The transition was fantastic. Oh, oh how close oh, was that? But it's oh, Victor no. Clarmo with just what? a hair faster. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. That was quick. He's got two big cookies as well. Look at that. And if his personal best was 14.08, how I about that with an 11.08? <laughs> I think he might have cut over the line because I seem to have seen line on the cookie. So we'll see what Bart says here. Oh, no. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one. Okay, stand two. Dick, oh, you dear. got the line. Ah, uh, that's too bad because there was a great cut. There would have been a three-second improvement to yeah. his personal best. Are you kidding me? Oh, right. no. 
That is unfortunate, but I saw the disc lying on the floor there, and there's that blue line on the disc, and I was like, oh, no, that's going to be a problem on. for him. So Emil Svensson with a, uh, a great time at the top with an 11.18, takes over the lead in Stocksaw, and uh, with Ericsson right behind him with an 11.77, and Halverson from Norway with an 11.85. So those times are really close together among the top three. Unbelievable. Yeah, very good. Mark. All right. Uh, I, 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 I feel really <laughs> sorry for Klamer. I mean, get yeah. a personal best, you know, advance three seconds on the stock. So I've not seen anything like this. This would have been a fantastic yeah. gap. And then you just cut over the line. Yeah, it was a massive cut too. That's for how both close of them. it can be, you know, just being euphoric yeah. and, and, and just having achieved he, something he really big. He jumped out <laughs> yeah, of the yeah, top yes. of that block as well. It's like springing up and uh, down in here. I was also jumping well. like, yeah, well done, man. And uh, no. uh, too bad for him, though. But he's still got time, and uh, talking yep. about time, uh, it is the original extreme sport. There's that a lot of history uh, with steel timber sports, and we might just use the time and take a closer look at these historic moments. Enjoy. Third woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Well. An axeman's gathering. This is Thomas losing the lumps to get to it. How about for some historic moments? Really nice to see, huh? The original extreme sport and uh, mixing it up in a big way here. And the action continues now with the standing block chop. That's one of my favorite disciplines. Yep. One of the hardest to really master and become good at as well. And that is one of the reasons uh, that we're only going to see the rookies and the intermediates competing in this uh, discipline. Yeah, unfortunately, no women competing in this one here, although they do compete in other parts of the world with the standing block chop. There's a lot of stuff that goes on to making the decision behind whether or not they do do it. And it has to do with whether or not the level of skill is there for every competitor. So they want to try and make it fair, and that's one of the reasons why. But we're not going to harp on that. We're going to uh, focus on the fact that we're, we're jumping see into in the, the rookies future, with the sure. standing block chop. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Standing block chop. At the standing block chop, the felling of a tree with an ax is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 27 centimeters has to be cut through from both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. So we're ready for the rookies. Yep. 11 competitors, six heats, and uh, we're just going to take a closer look. Who's going to be in heat number one? Well, it's going to be Axel Björk versus Anton Lindberg. Then we'll see Espen Pedersen against Robin Konicek. In heat number three, Adam Björns and Edwin Berglund. Heat four will consist of Lukas Wagesreit and Albin Nilsson. In heat five, it will be Bo Andersen all by himself. And finally, in heat six, we're going to get to see Johan Staff and Edwin Carlsen. And this will be a chance for Edwin Carlsen and Adam Anton Lindberg to be able to kind of make up for the DQs that they had in the stock saw, along with Lukas Wagesreiter, which was a bit of a surprise for me because he's normally very solid in this discipline. So, uh, yeah, standing block chop will be the redemption run for a couple of these guys here. 
and you'll see very shortly exactly why this discipline is very, very difficult to become very good at. And the world record stands at 11.9 seconds. Just for a rookie, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> just so we said that. Um, yeah, very difficult discipline, great to watch, and yep. it's like the original <clears throat> thing. That's what I like about it. You know, that this is what you imagine is yeah, happening. Yeah? This is what it's all about. Boom, you take cut the down a tree with an axe like this. As simple huh? as that. And maybe and you can already hear the noise. Things are getting, are getting just, hard and heavy on stage. They're setting up the yeah, blocks yeah. to make sure everything is solid on stage. Uh, once we've seen our first couple of heats, uh, we'll also I can't probably hear you. Come, it's back too to, loud. <laughs> come back to the studio and we'll explain a little bit about why this discipline is so hard to become good at because of the angle of the axe and the danger that's involved with this here. Oh. But first things first, let's get our first heat underway and uh, then we can talk a little bit about what the nuances of this particular discipline are really all about. So Axel Björk will be going up against Albin Nielsen in that first heat. We're just waiting for our guys on stage, our judges and the stage crew to say, okay, we're ready to go. And I just heard the signal. Yep. They are on the way. Let's take a closer look at the two athletes. And as you mentioned, that world record of 11.90 seconds, I mean, that is just unbelievable crazy. for this discipline. No, it is crazy. So we talked about the chainsaw, Troy, that you can uh, buy at the local dealer. These axes? I am okay. not sure. <laughs> Athletes <laughs> ready. Stand These are actually called to racing timber. axes. Three, two, and we're one, gonna find out go. why they call them racing axes right now. All right, so you can see Nielsen right there. He is using a lot of his upper body and his arm strength in order to try and make those first cuts. You can see he's hardly twisting his hips at all, and the angle of the axe is also really, really flat. And uh, what you'll see later on is when the really, really experienced axe men and women are working with these axes, they're going from at the floor level and they're swinging from way down low at a sharper angle. And that makes the cuts go in deeper and more solid. Right now you're seeing Nielsen, he got that axe caught in there pretty deeply. Now they do have to cut from both sides. So they'll go medium level deep on this first side and then they'll move over to the other side, which we've seen Nielsen do over on the far side of the stage there. Or excuse me, Björk on the other side of the stage is uh, starting to cut on his side. But you can see he's barely pushing off of that back foot. And you can draw a lot of power through the core of your body onto the, from that back foot onto that block when you're really trying to throw some drivers. It, it's almost like he's having a Sunday drive with this block at the moment. It's not going to bode well for him as well. The time is an issue. If it goes too far and they go beyond the time allowed to make the cut, there will be a DQ for time out. And it's getting close to that now. And this is the time where it starts hurting. <laughs> this is so exhausting. Yep, DQ, time limit exceeded, one minute, 30 seconds. They should be or are expected to be able to make these cuts in that time. They'll let them continue the cuts as long as the judges see that the guys are not being unsafe because they're too tired. And uh, what we did see there is Axel Björk did cut the top off of his block. Lindbergh, unfortunately, just didn't get there. Excuse me, uh, okay, Alvin Nielsen just didn't get there. Both DQ'd um, out of time. Both of them are DQ'd for being out of time. So as I mentioned, this is a very, very difficult discipline to become very good at and adept because of the angle that the guys are cutting at. If you cut in straight, it's going to take you forever to try and get through that block, and you're not cutting so those I, big you slaps me before that coming, come out. coming out of yeah, the knees. Yeah, you come way <laughs> down deep and, and drive up through the block because the first cut needs to be from underneath. And you can see it was almost like the guys weren't getting the power and they were just sort of tapping at it with their axe yeah, and, a little and, and bit. And then you, you know? just tire out. You and tire this out, is, yeah. This is something that's going to come with time. It's, gonna, it's just about time. It's just about learning. And we'll see the differences as more experienced athletes come on stage and you start to see them throwing real drivers into that block. Yes. 
So Anton Lindberg going up against Espen Peterson. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, you can already see right away Espen Peterson stepping well back on that right foot of his to make sure that he's pushing drivers into that block as much as possible. Lindbergh, still young and still inexperienced in this discipline, standing very close to the block with that back leg and isn't putting as much into the power. As you can see, Espen Peterson's already moved over to the other side. Now, he's putting a lot of weight into those drivers. He's also getting the axe stuck in there because the angle isn't as deep as it could be, but his level of experience is obviously much more. And here we're gonna see wow, a great wow. time and a personal best by Espen Peterson with a 33.20. Very good time for him. That is a fantastic finishing cut. You know, his personal best used to be 50.26. He just got a 33.2. That's an incredible wow. improvement. Wow. Another thing that you can see here is look at all the different cut angles and, and uh, the choppy positions in there. That also will go away with time as you see the more accurate hits being right on top of each other and more clean lines into the block to make sure that you're getting the most efficient cut and the most wood being cut out of each of those drivers that you put into the block here. Now he's got 15 seconds to get through there. The question is, can he do it? He's under pressure now oh. as six more seconds is going to pass by. And you can see he's barely stepping off of that back foot. He's just using his arms and shoulders to swing the axe. And again, this is something that's going to come with time and experience. And there we see the young man DQ'd because of time limit exceeded. But let's talk about Epson Peter, Espen Peterson there okay, with a great gentlemen. time of 32.96. Denmark is okay. And unfortunately, uh, stands one DQ out of time. So that's the ranking so far. 11 points for Pedersen with the personal best, and yep. then we have three DQs. So you can that's see the one. distinct difference between the skill levels here and the experience levels. I don't want to say skill because all of these athletes are quite skilled, but experience plays a huge role here. And you can see Espen Peterson, when he set up to make that first driver, he put his right leg well back. Yeah, he of the said block, it right away. You know, and yeah. he was really coming from way out here to try and make that first driver into the block. And, and talk about personal improvement. I mean, yeah. Pedersen, he just showed us what is possible. Exactly. And I think that's exactly the reason why they invented the Rookie Academy. And all you need to know about the Rookie Academy, well, we'll show you. Wir sind hier für die Rookie Academy, um uns auf die Saison vorzubereiten mit den besten Rookies aus Europa und internationalen Trainern, um unsere Fähigkeiten zu verbessern und fit zu werden für die Saison. Getting together with all the other European athletes and getting better together. For me it's a great training camp. For me, the Rookie Academy is uh, very important because uh, we can uh, confront each other. I'm totally delighted with the progress. The level is just climbing and climbing and climbing. What's remarkable is the dedication that these young guys have put in to the training programs, and that's what the Rookie Academy is about. It's about bringing those young fellas forward. A lot of the older pro competitors really need to be uh, up in their game now because these guys have got everything on their side. Youth, speed, power, and they've grown into young professionals.
Love so that. So a couple Love of that. the guys that actually went through the rookie academy and managed to do well in the rookie rankings have now moved up into the pro rankings. We will no longer see Oli Reinhardt from Switzerland or Marcel Steinkemper from Germany competing as rookies. They've jumped up to the pro levels. And of course, that's uh, the goal of all our rookies. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Edwin Berglund and uh, Johann Staff want to reach that goal as well. They can show us what they're up to right now. Edwin Berglund there has logged in a personal best just over a minute and 10 seconds, so a minute 11 and change. Johann Staff, on the other hand, he's uh, got a pretty good personal best time of 36.19. So okay. experience is playing Athlete a huge role ready. here. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Now you can see there Johann Staff started his backswing on the three, two, one, go count, but didn't actually impact the wood until the go. So that was an advantage of about maybe a tenth of a second, but every tenth of a second makes a huge difference in these competitions. And Johann Staff, uh, or excuse me, Johann Staff, that was that did that. Edmund Berglund is on the other side. He's also putting in some big drivers there. Let's see how these dudes do against each other. And uh, it's looking good with some nice big hits and both of them moving over to the other side again. Stepping off of that back leg, putting the power into those drivers towards the block. Nice big slab coming off for Johann Staff there. And I think we might even see a personal best time for Edwin Berglund if he can get through here. He's getting a bit of a, a couple of flat cuts, so he needs to change that angle. And he's, re he's really twisting his head heavily to try and put that axe in there, but he's pushing off the back leg. And you can see the skill level and the experience is definitely coming along. And both of these guys struggling with that block at the moment. Johann Staff on the right-hand side, Edwin Berglund with a big stick on the left-hand side there. So the big goal now is to be under 1 minute and 30 seconds you to go. get yourself into the ranks, and Berglund has done so. So Berglund staying consistent. He's around the 1 minute 12 mark there. His previous best time was 1.11, or 1.12, 1.12.25, uh, so... Almost the same, yeah. Pretty much the same. Johann Staff, however, ah, is disqualified here. That's unfortunate because it just needed one or two more extra drivers. And uh, well, he wasn't feeling it today, obviously, because his personal best is a 36.19. So really not his day. OK, ladies and gentlemen, stand one is good. Stand two, unfortunately, three seconds out of time. Thank you. Thank you. Edwin Berglund breathing heavy there, and that tells you exactly how much is going oh, on when these guys are swinging the axe. Terribly exhausting, terribly exhausting. So, Peterson still holding on to the top. Edwin Berglund is the only other guy with a logged-in time. Everybody else has had time limit exceeded DQs, unfortunately. So that, considering uh, Lukas Vargas had, had a DQ in the first discipline, will give him a great chance to move back into the competitive area to get back up on top of the list. Correct. So now we have three more heats. This next heat will be Adam Bjorns all on his own on stage. In this particular discipline, I would say it's harder to be on stage alone because there is no one pushing you along. Like uh, mentioned before, I, I, I wouldn't want to do it. So here he comes, Adam Bjorns. That's yeah, not, not too bad. too bad. Under the circumstances, if he can keep that consistency, then he'll be in second place. Let's see how he sets himself up here, and uh, right away we'll know. Ah, yes, stepping back with a nice wide stance to try and put as much power into those drivers as possible. And you can see the markings on the block. I was block. just okay. going to say, what about all those markings? Who, who put them on ready. there? They put Stand those on there in order to help timber. them guide the drivers in. Three, Here we go. Yeah, but two, was it Beyonce himself? Go! A little bit of a delay there on the go, and you can see a couple of nice, accurate hits on the first one, but now it's just about trying to get the power in there. A little skip out of the block, and that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about is if you don't have the right angle and that axe skips away, it can really get away from you and be dangerous. So that's one of the reasons why this discipline is so difficult to become very good at and very adept at. But he's got some nice drivers. His drivers from up high are looking good. What he needs to work on is bringing the drivers from down low to really get that 
cut from down below, clean but, but and powerful. Do you powerful. feel that this is also a weight issue? That, you know, those blows from, from underneath, if you can, I don't know, if you have 10, 20 Ks more than this guy has, or do you think uh, it doesn't nah, matter? No, because you look at some of the best Swedish cutters, Ferry Swan, he's not, a, he's not a heavy guy, but he's powerful, and he's got a lot of power in his legs, and that's where you can really work that axe and try and drive it from down low, pushing off of that back leg, which is why it's so important to have that solid back foot position. And Björns with a nice time of 102 and change, unfortunately not his personal best, but that's gonna put him in second place at the moment with uh, hopefully no DQ for anything untoward here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good, good. All right, so there we see the ranking. Uh, not really much of a change other than Björns and Berglund. Uh, Björn slipping into second place, pushing Berglund down into third place. And right now, if the competition ends, there's your podium. Nicely done. <laughs> Congratulations, guys, because of so many DQs in this one. But unfortunately, there's going to be some more changes in the overall ranking as we move into the next disciplines. Uh, but uh, yeah, for the moment, Peterson with a very, very good time of 32.98 sitting on the top of the standing block chop rankings. And of course, uh, the Rookie World Championships 2022. Oh, yes. They were not only uh, interesting for us to watch, but they also set the standard for everybody that is going on stage today. That's correct. And there was a world record set at the Rookie World Championships as wow. well. Shall we Say take that a closer look at that? Fast. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't, I won't. I'll just take a look. <laughs> Welcome to the Steel Timber Sports Rookie International World Championship. Right away he gets in there with two nice big accurate strikes on that one side. That was a blistering set of heats from these two guys. Unbelievable. And we're going to go to the next part of discipline. Uh, that is the stock sword. The side of his block. Four strokes. Holy moly! Simon Grunwald has broken the world record here in Austria. Fantastic stuff. Also Timber Sport ist einfach ein super geiler Sport, den ich sehr, sehr gerne mache. Uh, so, Jack Argent may, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Jack Argent may be the rookie world champion, but Simon Grunwald is the man who set the world record for the discipline that we're seeing on stage here right now. And uh, we can see the talent worldwide is definitely there when it comes to the sport. Unreal. That and uh, it's just going to get better and better as more people get into steel timber sports as time goes by. Talking about steel timber sports, we've got some more dates for you to put down in your calendars. Yes, sir. 27th of August, well, that's today. Um, not only uh, watching Steel Timber Sports at this very moment makes sense, but also in the afternoon, we're going to have the Pro Championship starting at 4 p.m. Uh, on the 4th of September, of course, uh, the German Pro Championship. On the 10th of September, the Swiss Pro Championship. On the 11th of September, the European Nations Cup. I know, Troy, you're really looking forward like to that. I like that one. <laughs> and on the 28th, uh, the Team World Championship. And uh, finally, on the 29th, the Individual World Championship. So a very, very... Big, uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 what do you say in English? Like, Busy schedule. Yeah, yeah, but but like, um, if, if you have a, a Strauss, uh, like, like a lot of flowers, a bouquet, <laughs> a bouquet yes, <laughs> a, a, a grand bouquet of of steel timber sports. And I mean, if you're enjoying today, uh, trust me, these are the competitions that are going to be just as good. It's yeah. Going to love something. the team competition coming up in October in Gothenburg here, as well as the individual competition. So that's going to be the end all be all for this season. It's going to be. Fantastic, Boom. book your tickets now. Yeah, make sure to, to see it live. We just saw it uh, from Vienna Rathausplatz, yep. uh, Rookies World Championship. The atmosphere is going to be absolutely amazing around here, corner in Gothenburg. And uh, things are getting loud again. We're ready for the next heats. And that is heat number five between Bo Anderson and Lukas Wagesreiter. Lukas has got an opportunity here to try and make up for that DQ, which was an unfortunate faux pas on his part with the stock saw. 
Uh, he's got a great personal best time here of 25 and a couple of seconds, 25.87 in fact. Bo Anderson, personal best of 44.58. Weather can play a role here as well. It's drizzling just a little bit out there, but not on stage where these guys are. But the, the amount of um, yeah, moisture in the air can also affect how these logs react under the circumstances. So let's see how Lucas okay. does here against Bo. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So both of these guys immediately telling me that there's a bit more experience in the, the way that they're driving into these blocks using that well wide stance and really putting in some nice accurate drivers there. I couldn't see the uh, cut side oh, from whoa. Bo Anderson, but Lucas Vargas right there, a little bit of the nerves taking over for him has uh, oh. really started to work on that backside of his block. But he's Bo angry Anderson now. on the other side. Yeah, he's really angry at that block. Bo Anderson, there's a difference in the way that he cuts. He's very accurate with that axe. You can see his lines are super clean on each cut right there. Oh. And that's going to mean good things for him. And he's going to have a personal best of 35-9-0. Fantastic job by Bo Anderson. What a and Lucas Vargas right there, right in there with a 33.95. Nice. So right now, standing block chop, okay, it's uh, Both gets a good. A Norwegian, an Austrian, and a Norwegian in the top three positions. With the top four positions, ah, top three positions just over 30 seconds. So we'll take a look at that here. So you, there you see the top three guys all around 32, 33, 35 seconds. Very close together, yeah. So very close together. And then the next closest times from Björnsen Bergland, just over a minute. So there is some work to be done here, and we're going to see the Two times more athletes improve coming up. as yep. time goes by and the experience comes. Yeah, we just heard it. Uh, Konicek and Carlson, the last two competitors in our final mm -hmm. heats in the standing block chop. So both of these guys are very, very solid in this discipline. And, and, and here you're going to see wow. Edwin Carlson with a personal best 19.25. And you'll see the experience and the difference between him and the guys that we saw off the hop in this discipline. Robin Konacek as well. A very solid man with the axe in his hand. So let's see. A couple of practice swings from Edwin. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Edmund looking pretty relaxed actually Ooh. as he takes some big hits there. Some mighty swings there. Robin Konacek looking very good and his pace is quick as well. I like it. And Edmund Carlson's already moved over to the other side of his block. He could have a good time here today. Robin Konacek. Working on the second side of his block, and Edwin Carlson's oh going to get it done in word. 21 at 20.47. Oh. Robin Konacek shouldn't be too far behind him, though. It looked like I was starting to wiggle a bit, but he may need a few more drivers than I anticipated. He's getting closer with a big stick right there, and one more should do it. He's done it in 36.31. He'll be disappointed by that time because I thought he was a little bit closer, and I think he thought he was a bit closer as well. But how about that for a final heat? Wow. All right, last checks on the blocks as they come off the top to make sure there's no... Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, right. both gets a good. <laughs> yeah. So we have Norway, Austria, Norway, Austria, and right on top, Mr. Edwin Carlsen. So Edwin Carlsen <laughs> with a great time of 20.31 moves to the top. And there you see he's at the top of standing block chop. Very happy about that. A good 12 seconds ahead so the crowd, of the yeah. next fastest, yeah? N not bad at all. So, so, so let's see how this changes the overall ranking here. Uh, so Edwin Ooh. Carlson still got a bit of work to do to come <laughs> from fifth place there. But Peterson up there, Espen Peterson at the top of the overall rankings with 18 points. Adam Bjorns and then Robin Konacek in third place. Yeah, oh, well, here we are again, <laughs> back <laughs> in the studio, <laughs> enjoying the competition so far. The intermediates coming up uh, right away, but there's yep. one thing I want to talk to you about a bit more because you, you, you were talking about the weather and the moisture, and it's you know, making a big difference on the wood, on the axe. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the wood. 
is it always the same? Uh, how can you make sure it's uh, more or less the same quality for every competitor? Well, the wood is always harvested from the same stands for a competition. And so the athletes will get the same wood for a competition. So it's not like that uh, one guy is going to get a piece of wood that's six months old and another guy gets a piece of wood that's like two months old, which Good. makes the difference in the amount of moisture in the block and also makes it easier or harder to cut through. So that plays a huge role. But the guys at uh, Bart Janssen's uh, company do a lot to make sure that the wood is fairly harvested and fairly distributed and then made uh, so that every athlete has the same conditions. So all the details coming up. Steel Timber Sports is an international extreme sports competition series featuring six disciplines. Three chopping and three sawing. We have a premier competition. We need premier wood. The biggest challenges that I face as part of my role is to ensure that our competitions are supplied with the highest quality wood. Each individual tree is examined for its conformation before processing. We need to make it fair for all athletes. So we are selecting different sections of the trees to use for each of our specific disciplines. Once the trees are felled, extracted and transported to our facilities, we measure, mark and then cut the wood into sized blocks. We then peel the blocks ready for competition. After careful selection, the blocks then leave our yard and are distributed internationally to our steel timber sports competitions. So there we have the start lists for our next competitors. We will see um, Mr. Gives uh, competes all by himself in the first heat and there he is already. Bart Givers. Later on, it will be Johann Sigerstedt and Kim Wolke. After that, Klaus Magnus Halverson and Peter Eriksson. And finally, Emil Svensson and Victor Klamo. That's the four heats we're going to see. And as mentioned before, starting it off with Bart Givers. Bart is actually one of the okay. more seasoned athlete intermediate ready. athletes. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! And again, talking about the stance and the amount of power and the accuracy of the drivers, you can see Bart has a quite wide stance. He's got clean drivers. So every time you can get as clean a driver into that block as possible on line with the one you just did, you're going to get a better and faster cut because accuracy also improves the speed. Ooh, and right there we saw that axe skip off. Now that is the thing that we talked about, how being experienced in this discipline can play a huge role and having that axe skip away on an upcut like that can be very dangerous. And you can see here his drivers are very flat compared to the first side and he's trying to put as much into it as possible. It looks like he could be close to his best time. Yep, pretty close. He stays consistent with a 43.02. His personal best time was I think a 40, 43 uh, or 42 and change. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good, good. So a time of 42.84 for Bart Givers in the intermediate category here. And uh, obviously he's going to be on top of the board, having been for the first the moment, athlete yes. out for this group. Uh, we don't need to talk about that. We talk about uh, where the skill level is at with the rest of these guys. As we've seen, Bart tends to, he's got a little bit more. But what I noticed there is on the first side, he had those really nice drivers, very accurate. And then he went to the other side, and it's almost like he was tired out and got a bit lazy on his hits. Maybe it's, it's tiredness, you know, feeling exhausted already, do you think? Maybe, uh, it's maybe. Lack of power? I can't say. Johann Segerstedt against Peter Eriksson. That's our next heat. That is for sure. Peter and Eriksson with a very nice personal yes, loss. 27.60. I mean, he is definitely the favorite in this... Uh, in this duel, but uh, 
Let's yeah. see what Johan has to offer. He's the the favorite is is not always the favorite though. We've learned that many times in the past where the athletes what do have you mean really the favorite is not the favorite. working on their weaknesses. Of course, he's ready. Stand <laughs> to your has timber. To be absolutely right. Three. Seen two, so many things one, happen in the uh, steel timber sports competition. So you can see Ericsson there on the left hand side of your stage at the moment from this view. Uh, not really throwing a lot of power into it. Siegerstedt also not really heavy on the drivers and very flat hits. You can see the angle of his axe on the upcut is very, very flat. Now, Ericsson's already moved over to the other side of his block, and it seems like the second side is the stronger side for him as he's got a wider stance. He's stepping back onto that back foot, pushing through the hips. Siegerstedt. Now on to his second side, now with a disadvantage, but it looks like he may improve on his personal best time. Both of these guys may well do it. Ericsson with a 37.68, that's a nice time. Not, Not bad as fast, all. 10 seconds slower than his best. So now for Siegerstedt, it's just about getting through that block in under a minute, which he should be able to do. It looks pretty close, but he's really driving from the shoulders and from the arms more than anything, and he's going to do it! Well, yes, a personal best under a minute. That's a great <laughs> job, and he is stoked by that. And what did I tell you? <laughs> That's the difference right there. The time they're spending off to make sure they're training up, and huge improvement for him going from a personal best of 110.94 to a 58.22. What about the tactics? He started more or less slow, but he kept it going and kept it going, and he knew exactly what he was capable of. Yeah, I enjoyed definitely. That. So now we're going to have a ranking. Um, seems like it. Yep, so Ericsson, Gavers in second place, and Siegerstedt. Uh, he's only 20 seconds off pace, and you saw the nice improvement from his side, and that was fantastic to see that. So, so far, so good. We've seen oh, some nice action there and some improvements. I like it. Uh, we, we, we've talked about things that you liked. Uh, what about the Nations Cup? <laughs> <laughs> Nations Cup, very good. We're going to see that very soon. Of course, we're going to be there as yep. well. Um, you want to hear a bit more? You want to get a bit of a yeah, teaser? Yeah, let's check out yeah, the Nations yeah. Cup stuff. Come on. A very warm welcome to the European Nations Cup. This is a very, very special event. Rumor has it, rumor has it. I'm a savage, I'm a savage. Drop the classic, drop the classic. Thinking back. Team is always a treffchen place, no matter what you're doing. Team three and score is always the gold medal. Got a mask, got a mask. Who was that? Living legend, lead the weapon. Mess of mind, never tried. Big dreams, I got big dreams since like baby. I've been joining forces with the likes of an AG. Wir müssen natürlich jeder seine Leistung für sich bringen. Gewertet wird es als Team. Also ähm, müssen wir als Team stark sein. Ich denke mal, das sind wir ganz gut, ich sehe aufgestellt. All of my struggles became lessons well learned. I got his eyes that keep me grounded, that's for sure. Cause one day we gon' make it out this earth. Where's your worth? I'm sick of your talk and you got the wrong one. I'm taking your king and I leave him broken. If I am a second, it's after no one. Just give me a second to let him know. I'm the headline, the deadline. I'm ahead time, the red time. I'm a living legend. So it's not exactly a team competition, but it is, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> Hashtag Timber moments. I, <laughs> I, I know exactly why you're really looking forward to that. So, so here we have the competitions uh, for the rest of the year coming up. Uh, I, I've said it so many times. Uh, yeah, we've got the German Pro Championship on the 4th of September. On the 10th, we'll have the Swiss Pro Championship. On the 11th, the European Nations Cup that we've just seen. September is uh, full. <laughs> yeah, and of course in October, Team World Championship and Individual World Championship coming up. So and there is, the Benelux, is be great. the Benelux Championship, but you'll have to watch that on the ticker. And uh, there's there's going to be more athletes mixed up in uh, everything that's going on in the Still next Still many days. points to be collected to exactly. find out who's going to be competing at the World Championship. Of course, we know the best Swede is going to be there yep. of, of the Pro Championship uh, that's going to start in the afternoon. But uh, the top seven uh, from, from Europe, they are going to be involved in the World Championship as well. And that, right. of course, is just around the corner. So uh, back mm. to the heat, back yeah. to the standing block job. Sorry, Troy. So but. we just heard there was one athlete missing. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, ah, there he is. Ah, it's just sa sauntering on the stage. Having a bit of a coffee break earlier on, maybe. Kim Volke, meanwhile, on stage, ready to go. Victor Klarmo just uh, setting up 
his position on stage right, if you're uh, looking from the audience point of view. And tell you what, uh, Kilamo is a man to watch. I mean, he, he showed us uh, in the last competition that he's capable of a lot. Mm -hmm. Let's just hope he doesn't uh, get another DQ. And I'm okay. sure he's going to surprise us with a great time. ready. Well, he needs to come back in Stand this one for sure. to your timber. Three, two, one, go! First couple of drivers there for Clarmo. And again, you can see that for that the upper angle is, is no problem. So driving from high down into the block. The lower angle is the one that's the issue for many of these athletes, and it's not coming from floor level as it should. But uh, Volka moves over to the other side of his block just uh, behind, I'm going to say, Clarmo. I didn't see when Clarmo moved over, but Volka at the moment, they're... Uh, Pretty much neck and neck here, but Clarmo looks like he's just putting a bit more power into it. To answer your question, <laughs> yep, talking about 3704. <laughs> to answer your question from earlier about having a little bit more weight behind your hits and a bit more power, yeah, sure, it can help if you're only swinging from the shoulders. But uh, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, look at that thing spinning around on top for Volka 5273. He's under a minute, that's quite okay. His uh, personal his best head, uh, is 44.98, so not his best cut today. But uh, Bart Janssen giving him a bit of a giggle there from the block spinning around on top. I think probably we're going to see that time change down once the competition control Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both gets a good. So, Victor Klamo finally getting himself some well-deserved points. Yes, he needed those desperately. So at the moment, he's atop the standing block chop. So let's take a look there. Seven points he'll get from this one. So that's going to be all he's got because of the DQ. If it stays like that. If it stays got, like still that. still got two more athletes coming up. But uh, Correct. He's definitely one of the favorites. And uh, uh, that finish from Klamo, I really mm -hmm. enjoyed that because it felt like he was getting stronger on the way. He, yeah. did, he didn't start off that. Interesting, hey? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so next up we've got Klaus Magnus Halverson from Norway going up against Emil Svensson. Very close together with the personal best, so this could be another really nice one. But for some reason I just feel like nobody's going to beat Victor Klammer in the standing block job. Are you going to go against me on that? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> this I mean, is the last um, So Put your money on the table. <laughs> I'm going to say okay. that Klaus Magnus Halverson is going to have an improvement Athletes here. Athletes ready. That's my guess. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, wow. Look at him go. Yeah, he's got the frequency in increased in his hits here. It's not exactly beautiful from down below. Svensson, though, he's also pretty fast with those drivers. Wow. But you can see his accuracy really isn't on point, but he's switching over to the other side quickly. Where is Halverson? He's still working on his first side. Okay, I put my foot in my mouth on that one. Maybe I even jinxed him. Sorry about that, buddy. Svensson has already worked on the other side though, waiting for the time for him because he should be close to finishing up that block. About three, four more drivers should do it for him as he is getting really close there. Ooh, a swing through that could have been problematic had he let go of that ax and he does it in a time of 37.20. Not bad, but Victor Klamo stays on top in he the does. standing block job. I thought for sure Halverson was going to make an improvement here, but uh, yeah. Not happening for him today as he steps past the one minute mark and now he has really got to put it all in in order to make sure that he is within the one minute 30 second time limit. He's getting tired. You he can is see it right tired. away. He's burnt. Oh, come on. You can do you it. Can do it, it's buddy. Like, we don't want to see a DQ in this standing block shop. Come on. He is absolutely spent trying to find that oh, energy. Oh, last eight seconds. Is and he, is and he, what's he, happened here is he's gotten so much power into the first side and he's lost the accuracy no. on the second side and it's become an issue for him because he's going in with flat it. drivers and that means it's going to be a DQ for overtime and he is disappointed. Absolutely oh, yeah, gutted after that yeah. performance, unfortunately. And I thought for sure he would be... Much closer okay, to his ladies and gentlemen. Best time. Stand two. It's good. Stand one. DQ out of time. Out of time. 
So, standing block chop is done and dusted for everybody. And we're going to be moving on to the next discipline. But taking a look at this, uh, you were absolutely correct with Victor Clarmo. Held on to that top spot. And boy, did he ever need those points. Oh, yes. He definitely needed those points. I'm pretty sure we're going to see the overall standing in just a second. Here we go. Yeah, let's see how this changes things a bit. So, so Ericsson, Ericsson and Svensson. holds Svensson. on to the top. Svensson in second place. Gavers moves down into third place. Clarmo holds on to fourth place for the moment. Um, uh, also, just, just for explanation, they both got 12 points, but the faster time is uh, what's going to make the difference correct. at the end of the day. Absolutely If we correct. have two athletes with the same amount yeah. of uh, It's good points. that you pointed that out because I missed that one completely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just because I'm always wondering, oh, they got the same points, but uh, at yeah. the end of the day, it's all the disciplines are run through yep, correct. over all four disciplines that's going to be. And the women are back. They are back, and we move on to our next discipline called the Misery Whip. I wonder why they call it the Misery Whip. <laughs> Here is all you need to know about the single bike. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Single buck. The single buck is a one man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. So our athletes are ready to rock and roll. We're going to see three heats, starting with Felixia Bank uh, going first all by herself. Then we have uh, Juliana Einfeld against Asa Nordberg. And finally, in heat number three, Tove Niastarts and Ayrun Übing. And I think they are ready on stage, Troy. We're yeah. ready to rock. Felixia is motivated here as well, because after the DQ in the stock saw with oh, that yeah. big cutout, uh, she wants to have a clean run with the single buck. Yeah, fingers crossed for her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, she's looking relaxed. Maybe she needs to put on a bit more tension in order not to have problems in this discipline here. As you can see, she's setting the saw in position. Two meter long crosscut saw, as you saw in the description. Look at the size of oh, those teeth. My words. Yeah. So the thing here is getting that saw started is like wrestling a bear. Ah. Keeping it started is like wrestling a bear while the bear is without any hair and greased up. It's hard. <laughs> That's a great picture in my head. Yeah. And now so she'll, sell, she'll have an assistant okay. on stage, as will all of them. They're Athlete called ready. Wedgers Stand or to your timber. Helpers, Three, whatever you want to call two, them. Two, one, go. go. All right. So right away, you could see starting that saw on, Felixia, is go for dramatic. It. So Felixia needs to really get that thing going. And yeah, once she has the, the flow, though, and gets that rhythm, then that's key to keep that rhythm going. And now when the saw disappears into that block, you'll see the wedge go in place. The wedge is there to try and assist the athlete in making sure that the wood doesn't bind on the saw. But that's just one of many problems that can occur here. And you can see a small change in angle stops the saw. Restarting that saw is an effort. It takes a lot of energy and a oh, lot of it power does. to keep that thing going. And restarting it takes even oh, more. She's doing a good job completely. now. Yes, come on. Now she's got the flow going, but you can see she's also not using the entire length of the saw. So again, this is something that you learn with time. You learn with training with other athletes that are better than you in this discipline. So right there at the end, you saw that she twisted the saw a little bit and it broke off. Now what they're oh, checking no. to see oh, is no. if there's a tab. If there's a tab, she'll get a DQ. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Good, good. Oh, yes. So That's luckily, what I she's wanted got to some hear. points and, and a personal she now has best. her personal yes. best. Well done. Good job, Felixia. Yeah. Happy to see her gaining points, keeping that smile on her face. 
So as you saw, that was uh, quite the, uh, you know, the, the difficult start for those big long saws. And I mean, I'm not a small person. No, I not. consider myself to have a little bit of uh, power. But uh, <laughs> the truth is, getting that saw started right. is really, really hard. Keeping it going, once you've got a good flow, it's not so bad. You should theoretically be able to move it back and forth if your position is right, just using one hand. Yes. But you <laughs> want to make sure that you're putting enough pressure on to cut and sweep all that wood out of there to make sure you got your cookie on the floor. And it's that's a, a nice one, one to try if you get the chance. Yep. Uh, if you visit like steel timber sports events, sometimes you get the possibility yep. uh, as a ordinary person to, to, to give this a try it is so difficult it is so hard yeah i, I mean there there are often uh, events where the the single buck is the one saw where other people can give it a chance and uh, yeah it's a great opportunity just to see what you're all about and if your strength is there here we go that's probably how uh Asa or Tove, you know got uh, to start with steel, steel timber sports this is heat number two, by the way, and the personal bests are not too bad. So, Nordberg versus Njastad, the Swedish deal coming up on stage right now. Well, the time to beat is actually 46.62, so that's a solid time from Felixia Bank. Let's see if either one of these two women can uh, match or better it. Osa Nordberg with a 57.18 personal best. Tove Njostad with a 41.15. But as we've seen many times in the past and even today, some of those personal bests just don't cut mustard here when the <laughs> conditions aren't right on par for your needs. And you can see the last minute positioning of the saw and also on the one stand there, Bart Janssen is there with the small metal guide to make sure that the saw is in the correct position for both of these athletes. There's Dan Janssen, last minute position. Ah, they're putting a block down for her. What? That's also interesting that they've opted uh, to allow the athletes to have a block behind the back foot for better pressure. You'll see some athletes wearing spiked shoes and some will get a block on okay. their back foot as a push assist. Athletes ready. ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, so one, time to find out go. if Felixia Bank's time is worth. Nice start by Osa Nordberg. Yeah, got great good rhythm. flow and oh, she gets a bit stuck there. You can see how the angle change makes a huge difference. Neustadt. Looking good as she's putting everything into it, waiting for that wedge to be positioned. You don't oh, want to put wow, it in there too wow. early and cause problems. And now she's got good flow. But here you can see the difference using the shorter strokes with that saw. You're not using the efficiency of the length of that two meter long crosscut saw. And it's really, really a Are battle. You kidding and a me? personal best of 3207 for Neustadt. Nordbeck still struggling to get through as she's only using about one quarter to one, ah, maybe one half of that saw length. Oh, but she's got a problem oh. as she's coming close to a cutout at the bottom as she's got a very, very thinning oh my oh and my getting white. thinner cookie at the bottom. I hope that doesn't break off and leave a tab for her. We'll keep a close eye on what's happening there with that cut. Great camera work to see. Oh my see goodness, how thin works is that? Oh no! Oh no! Come on! Is that. Oh. But oh you can my see oh how my it's way. starting oh. to flex, and oh wow, Whew. that was amazing. How thin that cookie was towards aye, aye, the bottom. Aye, aye, aye. The risk is very high that she twists that saw, breaks it off, and leaves a tab at the bottom of the block. I mean, it would have been a DQ anyway because of exceeded time, but unfortunately, uh, the DQ is okay, there nevertheless. Yeah, stand two is good, and stand one, unfortunately, out of time, DQ. All right, so Tova Njostad moves to the top of the leaderboard in single buck. Felixia Bank jumps down into second, or is pushed down into second. And Osa Nordberg with a DQ for time limit exceeded at the moment in third place with no points. All right, coming up next, we should have Juliana Einfalt going up against Aaron Ubing. Both of them very, very good cross-cut Sawyers. Oh, look at those personal bests. Mm -hmm. Solid. <laughs> Anders out there having himself a good time on stage. <laughs> yeah, obviously enjoying himself. <laughs> yes. Yeah, most definitely. 
So we've got a bit of rain a now. Bit. Do, do you feel that uh, this is something that uh, is changing things for the athletes? Not massively, in no. The, I think okay. uh, they're, they're well covered on stage. The, uh, uh, the, the BJ events stage with that uh, big deck and, and uh, backdrop keep the athletes pretty dry. The only thing that would be an issue then is if the wind really started to blow towards the front of the stage, which would then become problematic for maybe a bit of foot grip or on the axis, for instance, uh, on the handle of the axis. Oh, like but we saw with Lucas having that mm -hmm. slip off, yeah. Yeah, but uh, what they'll do very often is they'll wrap the axe handles in a cloth or they'll put some powder on there to make sure that the axes stay grippable. That's a great looking saw right there with a shark cut out at the very front. That's cool. I haven't <laughs> seen that yet. That's brand new for me. <laughs> Actually, it's great. Nice. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that girl when she, mm -hmm. she's got that saw in her hand. Definitely not. Talk about not messing around. I mean, Iron Übing, she is one hell of a competitor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, an injured hand in Vienna still competed oh. and did well. Uh, you got to give her credit where credit is okay. due. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, what we're going to oh, see here nice start from both. is a great start from both of these women. But the difference here is they're using the entire length of that saw. So really pushing it through and being as efficient with their cuts as possible. Wow. You don't have to be frantic, but you can be efficient with long, smooth cuts. And wow. Aaron Ubing wow. with a 19.20. Wow. Juliana Einfeld getting close to finishing off her bottom cut there as she comes through with a 28.53. That should actually be the second best time, if I'm not mistaken, because Tove Njostad had a 31.68. If that, that time is, is confirmed correct. for Juliana, it will be 28.30. And we'll put her into second space here at the single buck. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both kids are good. Well done, well ladies. Done. And did you see that smile when they shook hands? Yeah. That's beautiful to see. Yeah. And you could see the spiked shoes from Alder ah, Nubing. Yeah, yeah. So there we see she is uh, actually on top of the ranking here with Juliana Einfalt and then Tova Neustadt. Tora, excuse me, Tova Neustadt in third place and taking a personal best home as well as Felixia Bank getting a personal best too. Great for her to see that. And unfortunately, the time limit ex excluded so, and, for and Osa of course, Nordberg. This is what counts. And look at that. Nine, yeah. eight and seven points on the top three. Wow. Ubing before Njastad and Einfeld. So everything and anything is possible. Wide open. <laughs> oh, Wide wow. open. And that, of course, means uh, women's uh, discipline is over. We're going to move on to the rookies. Yep. Shall we take a look at the start list? You ready for that? I'm, I'm ready for the start <laughs> list, but okay. uh, let's talk about this. We, we've seen the styles that are happening with the single buck saw. How some people will start really quick and then move into long, flowy strokes. Some people will start with long, flowy strokes. But the main thing here is to cut as clean and efficiently as possible. So here are the heats with Axel Berg and Anton Lindberg competing in the first one. In heat number two, we'll see Espen Pedersen and Robin Konicek, I believe. Uh, no, Berglund and Pedersen. Then we've got Andersen and Nielsen. And uh, in heat number four, it will be Beyonce all by himself. As Again? In heat five. <laughs> yeah, the poor guy. Uh, Staff will take on Konicek and uh, finally Carlsen and Vargas Reiter in heat uh, number six. Axel Björk up against Anton Lindberg. No personal bests here, so we will lock in personal bests at this competition for both of these guys, assuming there is no DQ. And again, this will be with assistant. The competitions today for intermediate rookies and women, single buck is all with assistant. And you can see, just as they set the saw, 
how easily it glides through the wood. I mean, it takes away quite a lot of wood. It is very sharp, very precise. Emil Hansen going to be the assistant there for, I believe that's Anton Lindbergh. We'll be seeing Emil Hansen competing later on in the afternoon for the pro men. Also coming through the rookie ranks with impressive mm -hmm. scores. Very impressive indeed. I can really feel the tension now. That's another great aspect of steel timber sports. You know, it's okay. normally very loud and, and very intense. That's you have ready. these moments. Stand you know, where, where to just, your timber. You feel the Three, silence. You two, feel the tension. One, go. And you know, competition is going to start and uh, everybody's going to give their all. Anton oh, Lindbergh oh, with a little oh, bit of a, a hookup there. Start, had started yeah. well. Axel Björk. A little bit behind as he starts to get into the rhythm. Lindbergh doing the same thing, but uh, again, changing that angle ever so slightly can lock up that saw. And like I said before, with the women, if that saw locks up, it's a real bear to restart. It's a greased bear, in fact. Oh, and a great time for Anton Lindbergh with a 29.30, and as I mentioned, these will be the first logged in scores for them in competition, and that means personal best for both of these guys, and Axel Björk with a 40.39. So well done there for both of these guys. Could be worse. It yes. definitely nice could be worse. Nice start into this competition. And again, this is just about experience. You know, it's about experience and time with the saw in hand or the ax in hand. However, you get that experience. The more time you can spend doing it, okay, the better you're going to get at it. Both cats are good. Oh, I mean, look, look at Lindbergh. He's such a nice character. <laughs> Almost yeah. shy, saying, oh, yeah, I, I just achieved something. You know, I got myself a, a great time. Of course, it's a personal best. Yeah, he's a young guy. You can see that he's definitely there. It's just a couple more things that need to, to click for him, for him to really take that next step. You know, he needs to become a little bit more powerful. He might grow a little bit more. He's still very young. Uh, and, and once that... <laughs> I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> once that happens, though, and he gets that skill and that experience, then we're going to see yeah. him knocking out these uh, events, uh, no and problem And that's what at these guys are here for. That's what rookie competition is all about. Yeah. And we, we've seen so many great athletes proceed from starting off as rookies uh, to be great competitors Correct. in, in yeah. the pro competition. And hopefully Edwin and uh, Espen are going to do the same sometime. So uh, we've got Berglund versus Pedersen up on stage. That's our heat number two. Single buck, personal best time, 41.98 for Edwin Berglund. And again, these guys so young, Espen Peterson, getting a little bit of help from Bo. And I'm imagining that when Bo Anderson comes out to do his cut later on, he'll probably have Espen helping him out, you know? You scratch my back, I'll scratch yeah, yours. Yeah, now there you see, on the left-hand side, Edwin Berglund with his saw upside down in the groove that's been cut. What that's doing is giving him a chance to check his stance and be able to move the saw without actually illegally cutting before the competition can start, and uh, he'll have it's that. It's the first time I've seen it today, uh, yeah. although normally and you see it quite often. You see it quite often, time, yeah. and it also helps clear out any of the slough that's left ah. inside that groove True. as they do move the okay. saw back and forth. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So here you can see Espen Peterson has a much more aggressive stance, very wide with his feet. Berglund, on the other hand, has a bit more of a relaxed stance, but he's using his arms and upper body quite a bit in order to move that saw. Peterson, on the other hand, is using the entire length of that saw. You can see the tip of the saw disappear as he draws back through the wood. Both of them having fairly good flow. Emil Hansen still guiding oh, oh. Berglund along, but Ed Espen Peterson with a great personal best of 22-27. That? that is fantastic. That's and 
Berglund, a 33.02 personal best for him as well. Great improvement for both of these guys. Almost 10 seconds for both of them. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's what we want to see, and that's what you talked about so many times. You know, yep. If you achieve a personal best, that means you've done good. Yeah. You know, you, you Any time that you can walk away with a personal best means that you've made improvements in your skill level and your experience level, and it's a big deal. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand one. Uh, still good. Pumping. Stand two, DQ false what? start. Oh no, oh. false start on a DQ for Espen Peterson. Oh, I didn't no. see that. So Neither I'll, did I. I don't know if we have slow-mo replay on that, but uh, we'll, uh, that's a, that that's is a, a real, shame. No, that's a gut punch for Espen Peterson right there. He started a little bit before the gun, unfortunately. But, but even with 10 seconds precise, difference, yeah, yeah. You no, know? But that's how precise our, our, our judges work. Yeah. We didn't notice. I, I don't think the audience, uh, audience noticed. I don't even think that Pedersen noticed himself. But we've got the camera pictures. They, they will check out on everything. And uh, oh, I feel sorry for him. That's, uh, that's a tough one. As we proceed to heat number three with Bo Anderson and Albin Nilsson. Personal best, 40.14 and 40.29. So that, yeah, should be that could be between a these two very, guys. very close heat. So you can oh, see there's the smile back there on Bo's is. face. <laughs> you can see Bo Anderson. He's a long, lanky character, whereas Albin Nielsen's a little bit more powerful from the look and, and a little bit stockier. Um, and both of their times are very similar. So here, what we might see is two different cutting styles and how that long lankiness, those long legs and long arms could really be an advantage over a guy who's maybe using shorter, stockier, quicker cuts. So we'll see. Let's see if we do actually have vastly different styles between these two athletes. I will or take if a very close similar. look now. You told me, Troy. Very close look. Foot position is going to be interesting to see how they both set up. I'm a big fan of Bo Anderson, I have to, I have to mm. say. I, I, I like this character. Yeah. Yeah. The fierce look on the picture, but always the big smile when he enters the stage, when he goes off. No matter if it's a DQ or a great time, he's just enjoying himself. Oh, look, <laughs> a very different positioning right from the start. Mm -hmm. Okay, athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Ah, what's so? There you see right away Bo Anderson getting into it with some quick start cuts and then gets into the longer, flowier rhythm. Now, yeah, yeah, he's starting to use that, but he's still moving pretty fast, but he's using more of the saw now as he gets through the midpoint of his cut. Nielsen really struggling to find the rhythm here as his angles are changing too much. And I think that has to do a lot with his body position too, because if you look, he's twisting his upper body and using his arms a lot to reposition the saw in position on the block. How many times can you say position in a sentence, Troy? And Bo Anderson, he was actually standing behind the saw and pushing the saw through, using his hips and upper body and but, his but back that's, legs. That's so what you mentioned at the beginning, that you expect them to have different techniques. Different styles, in this case, yeah. uh, what and has to say? Those uh, aggressive spikes on Bo Anderson's good. shoes. Those are massive. So All two right. personal bests. Oh. Yeah, still good. Okay. Personal best. A good improvement by Bo Anderson. Good three seconds for him. Three and change. Uh, and Albin Nielsen, just two tenths of a second better yeah, than still. his previous. So he'll take it. Look at that. <laughs> personal sure. best across the board, almost. <laughs> and it would have been a personal yeah. best for Espen Peterson as well. Come on, let's, let's yeah. be honest. You know, a false start isn't going to gain you 10 mm. seconds. No, not at all. Unless you start four seconds ahead of the clock. So that so, I mean, was very impressive. Realistically there. speaking, we have personal best across the board. It's an unfortunate boom, boom, boom. DQ for a false start, which is probably milliseconds Fraction, yeah. ahead of the start gun for Espen Peterson. But we didn't know it's feel so bad so for him. I mean, really, he had a great cut. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, that's what we expect from our next heats as well, of course. Some Absolutely. Personal best.
with uh, Johann Staff and Robin uh, Konicek uh, coming up and Edwin Carlsen and Lukas Vargaset. And I've just been told we might have had a false start again. Now, I think what we have here is a review of the false start from Peterson. So maybe we get a chance to ha have a look at that and just see really how little the difference was. I I'm hoping that's what they mean by coming we'll over our out. ears here. Uh, <laughs> do, we, do we have that, guys? Oh my goodness, we've just been told the false start was by 0 0.11 seconds. So one, more or less one tenth of a second too well, quick. Th th there's nothing that you can really no. say. It's just, um, yeah. Yeah, unfortunate it, for Espen Peterson, but like we said, it would have been a personal best of uh, at least eight seconds had he started on time. So, you know, he was good to go and he had a good cut. It's just unfortunate that we did have that false start, but that's but the that's way it goes, this competition. Yeah. We're trying to get world class here if you're in the rookies competition, yep. and that's uh, the way to go. Uh, Adam Bjorns now in heat number four, competing all by himself, just against the clock. Yep. We, we've we've uh, talked about this many times. Um, he's ready and set, and uh, hopefully he's not going to start too early and, and fast. <laughs> Time to beat at the moment belongs okay. to Anton Lindberg with a 29. Athlete ready. ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Nice start, very smooth. He's got good style already. You can see he's using those blocks that the guys put into the floor for him. He's got a nice thin oh, makey. It looks so easy. He huh? almost doesn't need that wedge from his assistant on stage. That is a beautiful thin cookie. If he can keep that line, he's gonna have a solid time here just passing the 20 second mark. In fact, oh, I think he's definitely going to have a personal it. best here. He's getting close to it. Wow. There it is. Wow. Yes, it is. 27.60, personal <laughs> best, and the fastest time of the day. Nice. So not so bad for him to be alone on stage. Hey, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Very Love much it. looks like it. But that was so smooth. He made it look so easy. That was impressive. Wow. Yeah, but this is this is the thing that we say, you know, smooth okay, is gentlemen. clean, clean is fast. That's good. good. <laughs> and also, he's another one of these nice <laughs> characters. These guys still have to learn how to celebrate yeah, a yeah, bit, though. Yeah, so huh? shy. It's like, <laughs> man, you, you were just killing it. It yeah. is brilliant. 1.66 seconds faster than Lindbergh, so that puts Björns into first place for the moment. We still do have two more heats to go, but that was great. And, and this is exactly what we were illustrating right from the very get-go. It doesn't matter who's doing it or, or you know, how it's do being done. As long as those cuts are smooth and clean and flowing, then you're going to have a good time. And that's exactly what we saw in that last oh, That was a perfect demonstration. It was beautiful. Yeah. Johan Staff uh, against Robin Konicek. Personal best from Robin Konicek, 14.38. So He is great in this discipline. Whew. But you'll also see his style. He'll have a very wide stance. And he uses that upper body power as well as the blast off of that back foot to really work that saw here. Johann Staff, also pretty good solid time of 28 and change for him. So if he can make an improvement here, it's stepping into the next realm for these guys. Yeah, and of course, it's the third of four disciplines, and uh, all the points you can collect now are going to be very, very important uh, to make it uh, to the top of the podium. And all of these guys, they, they still see the chance, and they still have the chance. So check out that back foot by Robin Konacek there. Very far out. He's out in left field, but he's got a really wide stance. Let's see if... Johann Staff does the same thing. I think he will. Okay. okay. Athletes, Athletes ready. ready. Stand, Stand to your to timber. timber. Three, Three, two, two one, one, go. go. Very so check out the style here from Robin Konicek. He gets into the wood with a couple of really quick cuts, and he's got a lot of encouragement <laughs> Are you from Lucas me? Vargas right, right on stage there. Now look at the time from oh, Robin Konicek. Oh, yes. wow. 
well. A 13.65 personal best for Konacek. A oh, great that's job. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Staff was struggling to get that saw started, but then got into the flow. He has also got a pretty thin cookie, but here he's got to be real careful that he doesn't break. Oh, he's done it. He's broken off the tab. And that's what I was talking about. You got to reset that and cut it off properly. And now he's in a bit of trouble because it's not cut clean off. And that could mean a DQ for him. And he can't touch it with his hand. But what so that's going to be a decision Konicek. by our judges here. And, and Lukas Vargas right there, he, he, he was part of the team. He yeah, was, he was yelling and screaming. <laughs> well, good, good, good. Robert was not allowed to oh, stop. Good stuff by Johan Staff. He managed to uh, keep that uh, good just, cut. He managed, it was yeah. just off at the bottom. So Robin Konacek with a fantastic 13 that's four impressive. nine. Look at the difference there, though. 13.88 seconds difference between first and second place there. Bjorn's in second, Lindbergh, and then Staff with his time, which I thought was going to be a DQ. Thankfully, wasn't as a 31.71 in fourth place at the moment. And that means that Robin Konicek and Adam Bjorn's both would have 27 points at the moment in overall, putting them right on top of the board, but of course we've still yep. got Carlsen and Vargas right to come and they are also longing and, and going for This is the a discipline times, yeah. where Edwin Carlsen is very, very strong. You can see his personal best is very good. Uh, Lucas has been working hard on this discipline as well and his personal best tells you exactly that same thing. Um, tail of the tape here in this case, Lucas has uh, an advantage based on personal best. But based on what we've seen in the past with the Swedes, Edwin's been working hard to try and make improvements in this discipline. And he's got one of the best to help back him up in Hans Ove Hansen, mm. who was always very, very good in this discipline. It's going to be nice to see uh, Robin shouting at, uh, at Lucas yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to help him. You know, it's well, these two guys, you know. <laughs> They're pushing each other to try and make it to every improvement that they can get. Yeah, great to see him uh, here. It's oh yeah, with a second cut on that log. Yeah, that was just where they placed the saw the first time around. He went too, too deep, deep, so they had to reposition right. and okay. make sure that the second cut was fair. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Great view of those spiked shoes that the guys use as well. Edwin Carlson, look at deep oh, knee bends, really working the power into that saw. And it looks like we're going to have a good time for both of these guys. They're battling hard oh, against each Carlson, other, but it's going to be... No, uh, Vargas Reiter, are you kidding me? Where did that come from? And a personal best for Carlson of 13.48. <laughs> that is a grand effort from both of them. But where did that come from, that finish? He's not Finnish, he's Austrian. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was a beautiful cut from Vargas Reiter, though. Absolutely flawless. Yeah, and that would put Vargas Reiter on top before Carlsen and Konicek. But let's uh, wait for Bart Janssen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Both cuts are good. All right, so Eric. Uh, excuse me, Edwin Carlson with a personal best sitting in second place. And we'll take a look at the overall rankings here after the single buck rankings. So, And of course, the Austrians are only guests. So, uh, correct, yeah. So that, that's against, something uh, that we should point out. The Austrians that are here are only guests, so they won't be on the podium today. They're here as uh, a chance for them to train and practice, but taking a look here, uh, actually, it's Björns in second place overall with Carlsen in third place. So this last discipline that's coming up for our rookies, the underhand shot, will be the deciding, or in the case of uh, yeah, the big boys, the make or break discipline to see who's got the fastest underhand shot. That could be the difference maker. <laughs> it, 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 it couldn't be more exciting. And of yep. course, we, we've seen the women on the single puck. We've seen the rookies on the single puck. And that just leaves us with the intermediates. And, it's um, the intermediates coming up next. And then one more discipline after that, the underhand chop. And as I said, that's going to be the decision maker in the Swedish rookie competition, definitely. 
So let's take a look at our start list for the single puck here in the intermediate competition. We will see Bart Gavers uh, competing all by himself in the first heat. Then we have Johan Segerstedt and Klaus Magnus Halverson. Peter Eriksson and Kim Wolke in heat number three. And finally in heat number four, it will be Emil Svensson and Victor Klarmo. And I believe Bart Gavers is already on stage getting yep. prepared. He's shown a lot of skill today. I oh, mean, yeah. he's been very, very solid. At the moment, he's sitting in third place. So he has an opportunity here with a really nice cut to move to the top of the ranking and put some pressure on guys like Peter Eriksson and Emil Svensson, who are sitting currently one and two in the overall standings. But Bart Gievers is in a good position right now as we set him on fire in discipline number three for our intermediates as he gets a big stare down okay. from his colleague. Athlete ready. Athlete ready. Stand, Stand to your to timber. timber. Three, three, two, two one, one, go. go. Good start. Oh, I said it too soon. He got a big hookup that cost him a good one to one and a half seconds, but then he got back into the flow. He's moving that saw quite quickly. Let's see if he can keep that flow going through to the bottom of this block as he's just coming towards the 22nd wow. mark and just gets there in 19.50 seconds. So that is a solid time for Bart Gevers. Absolutely. And he was using the whole length of the saw. That was yeah. really nice to see. Because you always remind me and okay, you keep saying, take a look at And good, he did. Good. He definitely did. And again, he's got those, uh, those shot put or discus shoes on. Uh, with the big spikes on there, at least the old school shot putters and discus throwers used to use those. And the, that just gives them a little bit more grip on the floor as they're trying to move back and forth there. It could also be good for dancing or, <laughs> or skating. Or yeah, or, well, if you're <laughs> dancing on ice without skates, sure. Um, no, nah, but I mean, the, the, that extra grip just uh, allows you to push off that back foot, drive through the hips, and then push that saw through. And uh, just and gives did you that better grip I on both sides. And he had a really nice clean cut. And to, with 19.30 official after adjustment, that's a good time. So that is the time to beat for our intermediates at the moment. And that is the time to beat for our next heat. Let's uh, take a closer look at our two athletes, Johann Segerstedt and Klaus Magnus Halferson. Personal bests with 41.13 and 33.42 would uh, not make them the favorites to beat the time of Bart Gevers? Not at the moment, no, but uh, after a really disappointing standing block job by Klaus Magnus Halverson, he's going to want to step in here and really put the hammer down, literally. Uh, Johann Segerstedt also at the moment um, right yeah, in fifth position. Uh, you know, if he has a blistering time, he might compete for top spot, but that's going to really require like a massive time here. There, are those blocks that we talked about for our guys that don't have the spiked shoes. Not massively okay. weak stances either by either of these Athletes guys. ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Siegerstedt very gingerly gets that saw moving and gets a bit of a stick going there as uh, he's hooked up a couple of times, but it didn't look too damaging. Halverson seems to have nice flow, but he's using his arms a lot and that's gonna tire him out quickly as he gets towards the middle of the block. And he is pushing frantically to try and keep that saw moving. Siegerstedt very gingerly still trying to find the flow, but he's only using about 45 centimeters of the saw and Halverson with a personal best of 31.41. So that's nice to see right there. Definitely an improvement for him after that disappointing standing block chop. Sigerstedt just not really as efficient as he could be here using short choppy cuts and not using the entire length of the saw. And that's by virtue of basically just standing on that back leg and pushing back and forth with his arms. And is it maybe also losing your confidence? And for you, sure. you go for shorter strokes just to make sure not to lose the flow if you go in with the whole length of the sword? For sure. I mean, it, it does ex like I said, a lot of this comes down to experience. Okay, then, gentlemen. Both cuts are good. Yeah, it's like, yeah, he nods his head. Yeah, I know. It was not a good <laughs> cut. I, it was a good cut, but it was not a good time. It's the 
So a couple of Norwegians on the top of the single buck ranking for the moment with Siegerstedt getting himself a 52.60 time. And Gavers with a 19.30, really solid time for him. That uh, is still remains to be beaten here in single buck for our intermediates. Yeah, we've got four more Swedes coming, so um, I'm pretty sure there is uh, a big chance of, of that time getting beat, but it's going to be a tough one, and uh, Peter Eriksson and Kim Volker are going to be the next two to try and succeed. A couple of guys that are pretty close together in size and in their personal best, so uh, it should be an interesting battle between these two. Incredibly expensive saws here for a hand saw. Uh, if you say incredibly expensive, uh, what amount of money are we talking about? Just uh, approximately? Upwards of 1,500 oh. or more for okay. a custom made laser cut saw in uh, the best possible quality and condition. And I think everybody has their own secrets about uh, getting the, the saw as sharp as possible. Well, Not everybody wants to share all the knowledge. The thing is, is that the raker or sweeper teeth and cutter teeth are almost always the same. It's just laser cut and very, very sharp, hand sharpened and laser cut. Um, sometimes it's about the shape of the saw or how much material is above the teeth okay. as opposed to athletes ready stand to your timber design yeah, yeah, yeah. three two one go oh a bit of hopping by kim volke there erickson's got his saw moving as he's going for those frantic yeah, but cuts. look at the speed he needs to breathe yeah, yeah. It almost looked like he was holding his breath there for a second as um, that, that's what i thought you know yeah. if you don't want him to, to, to fall over Drop out. Yeah, Volker getting close to the bottom, and his cuts were really crazy at the start, but he's actually got oh, himself nice. a personal best of nice. 2560, and Ericsson with a 29.50 personal best, and uh, that puts Ericsson into first place in the overall standings for the moment with 17 points total. So he's been consistent throughout the entire competition, uh, and uh, that's showing in his standing at the moment. So all we need is uh, to wait for Bart Jensen to give us a both cuts are good, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both cuts are both good. Cuts. That's what we want to hear, <laughs> two more personal bests. You can almost hear it in his voice when he says, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> both cuts are good. <laughs> so Bart Givers with his 19.30 by virtue of that time holds on to top spot in single buck, but we've seen some shifting around there with uh, Kim Volke getting a nice personal best of 25.46, moving into second place there and pushing everybody else down a notch and our last heat coming up. And this is of course the final heat in the single puck discipline. Two Swedes coming onto stage, Emil Svensson and uh, maybe my personal favorite at the moment, Victor Klamo, 116 Ks, <laughs> 1.81 meters tall and um, he's been rocking it. He's Except been for solid. that DQ yeah, at the beginning, he's, very you know, he's solid. showing us he's made great improvements since the last time we've seen him compete. Now, the only thing he had a problem with was at the beginning with that yep. DQ with uh, a cutout, but otherwise he's been solid through the competition. And uh, standing block chop, he was good. Uh, single buck with assist is the question now on everybody's mind for Victor. Emil Svensson, um, he's got a good personal best there. There was a freestyle motocrosser back in the day called Morgan Carlson. We used to call him the Sweet Swede. But I think <laughs> I might change that uh, to uh, Emil Svensson being the Sweet Swede here because uh, he's been really solid throughout the day as well. Uh, Stocksaw gets seven points there. Standing block chop, he had five points. He's currently sitting in third in the overall standing. So if he gets a good cut here and comes close to his personal best time, he'll move into the top position. But Victor also has a really solid personal best of 15.39. So this could be a good battle between these two guys. I was just going to say, wow, that's a weird hand position, but they were just uh, repositioning the saw. I was like, hey, he's not going to cut like that, is he? But no, it's just him 
waiting for his assistant to help him reposition the saw in the set groove. Oh, there's some okay. concentration right there. Athletes ready. Stand to Kill your timber. timber. Three, Three, two, two one, one, go. go. Oh, that's a great start from both athletes. Interesting, their styles are very similar. Positions are similar as well, just uh, from another hand side like for Svensson. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they're using quick, oh. choppy strokes. Oh, is, this, is that a world What's record? record? <laughs> I told you, 13, I four, told five, you, this Clubo. man is on fire. Unbelievable, <laughs> fantastic job by that man, and you called it, Marcus, good job. Victor Clubo with a 13 four, five no world record, way. that is fantastic. No way, let's wow, wait. Wow, what <laughs> a push from Victor, unbelievable. And that finish, he... <laughs> I don't think he cares if he wins the. I don't think he cares if he wins the competition. Yeah, Taking that home is going to be a huge deal for him. All right, let's wait and see here. Stand one, good. Stand two. We have a new intermediate world record. Congratulations! Yes, we okay, have good. Yes, the confirmation. <laughs> I, th I think we have to go up on stage and oh, get yeah, an interview yeah, with him. We no gotta get uh, Anders over there. Uh, and right away, <laughs> Rymo making sure that he is ready to go with Anders. And uh, we'll give him a second here as we take a look at the, the rankings pictures, yeah. now in single buck. 13.3 seconds for Victor Clarmo. A fantastic run there in single buck, taking the world record for the interview. And we are going to go up to Anders on stage right now with Victor. We have just seen a new intermediate world record in the single back. Victor Clarmo, congratulations. Thank you very much, Anders. It feels, uh, feels really good. I've been uh, chasing this the whole season, so it feels really good. Is this your very best event? Uh, well, now it is. <laughs> uh, you, you started out in the sport years back and uh, have come back now just since this year? Uh, no, I started again 2020. I took up the sport again and... Uh, yeah, I've been coaching a lot and uh, it's fun to spread the sport. Good to find new athletes and spread the sport here in Sweden and, and the Nordic countries. So when will we see you challenging the pro division now? <laughs> well, now when it's going this good, maybe next year. <laughs> Let's hope so. Congratulations to the world record. Victor Clarmo is the new world record holder in the intermediate division. Wow. What a character. <laughs> huh? what and he's, a got, <laughs> he's got his disc that had that world record time <laughs> in his head. He's going to take that one home and wrap it in plastic and probably oh, cover it in gold and put that one on the wall. That's amazing. I would. I would. <laughs> Big so, congratulations to Victor Clarmo. Uh, talking about uh, world records, uh, let's take a closer look at the world championship yes. that's coming up in October. Don't miss out. Uh, uh, it's going to be it's absolutely gonna be epic. fantastic. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. I'm looking forward to that one big time. Yeah. And of course, so we're looking forward for our last discipline and the women are back. This is where it all will be yep. decided. Uh, we're getting ready for our last discipline, the underhand chop. And here's all you need to know about this discipline. Check it out. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. 
The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut with the axe through a 27 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. And this is the discipline where the new athletes in the sport will begin to learn how to utilize the axe and cut with the angles because it's the safest version to learn that on before they move to the standing block chop, which we saw earlier on in the day. Uh, but this can be a fun one as well as it gets really hectic and wild out there. Well, let's take a closer look at the standings for the moment. Uh, and here you have it, Übing with nine points up front. Njastad with eight, and then Einfeld with seven. These three are going to be the ones uh, that are going to decide who's going to be on top today. So uh, a lot to look forward to. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot more women join the sport. And I mean, here we have a pretty thin group of women uh, that are competing, but it is improving from event to event, and we're seeing a lot more, which is fantastic. And things are getting loud because heat one uh, will be Asa Nordberg fighting all by herself. And then we have in heat number two, Felixia Bank and Tove Njastad. And finally, in heat number three, Julia Einfalt and Iron Übing. So everything and anything is still possible. Yep. Time to find out who's going to take home the win today. And it's nine, eight, and seven points, respectively, in the top three positions here so a good time in the underhand chop can change the ranking drastically as Osa Nordberg gets ready for her underhand chop. There you can see she got second place at the Elmia Women's Cup in 2022. Okay. Athlete, ready. Athlete ready! Stand, Stand to, your to your timber! timber. Three, Three, two, two one, one, go! go. Nice clean cuts to start. You can see the accuracy of Osa's hits there as she gets in and starts to slab out that block a little bit. And obviously, nice and clean is the way you want to be. Now you'll see she's wearing pretty soft-soled shoes there. Uh, that may beg the question, well, wouldn't you want to worry about cutting your foot wide open? Yes. You can also see just a hint of the chainmail socks that these athletes are required to wear when practicing these disciplines. And uh, that is in order to protect the foot and leg from being cut. Now, obviously, if that axe hits a foot, you could probably oh. break a toe or something like that. But at least it's not going to cut through and do some major damage to the tendons. Osa has just moved to the other side of her block now. You can see nice, clean drivers going in there in line with each other. Hans over Hansen in the background keeping a close eye on what's going on. One of the main coaches for the Swedish athletes. She's got to make sure she gets a solid time here as the time will also be an issue for DQs. Oh, and she needs the support from the crowd now. Yeah, and now they're making some noise out there. She's getting close to cutting through. Just didn't make it. Uh, That's unfortunately, a shame. yeah, the time limit is exceeded. But she's going to keep going, and oh, they're going like to let that. her keep I like going. That, yeah. And I like that as well. And she is through, unfortunately. A DQ for a time exceeded in this case, and that's going to be a disappointing situation for her as well. And she's going to take that into the memory bank and think about how okay, to improve gentlemen. there. Unfortunately, DQ out of time. Oh, and I like what Bart says, unfortunately, because yeah. he feels just like we do. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, DQ out of time. <laughs> so, that's the difference there, right? Um, totally. Yeah. That's uh, how things work. It's yep. uh, it's a tough competition, the and, and, and the rules is, are really harsh. But yeah, uh, the rules are harsh. But this is all learning experience, and and we've been saying it all day long. It's about getting that experience out there and improving yourself 
everywhere and all the time along the way. And, and we see that with each of these, these uh, for instance, personal bests that drop. You know, it may not be the best time, but each athlete that drops a personal best, it means that they've made an improvement in their and that's, and that's great. skill level. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what we need, you know, it's improvement, improvement, improvement. Correct. You, you can only learn while competing. Yeah, and, and the more people that come in, the more pressure there is on the athletes that are there. And we're seeing the rookies, for instance, and those intermediates that are going to make the transition to pro soon are making a lot of the pros sweat. You know, we've seen a couple of <laughs> yes. good rookies today uh, from the Swedish side, from the Norwegian side, as well as from the Austrian side. That and are, more and more women. That are knocking down the door of the pro level. And uh, the pros are going to kind of go, oof. I got to start working on my skills as well. Yeah, and we have uh, the International Women's Cup also nowadays. Uh, so more and more yep. women are starting to compete. Correct. And um, you should take a closer look at our next video. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Steel Timber Sports International Women's Cup. Absolutely, incredibly accurate with her axe. Yeah, just the atmosphere is amazing. You can bet that they're going to be going absolutely bananas out there. Brand new personal best, that's amazing. She's going to get to the bottom of that one quickly. What a fantastic effort by both of these women. Jeez Louise, can you believe that? You really have to be on top of everything. The slightest little bobble can set you back. Martha King has showed us something here today. Oh, wow. Vienna? Mm -hmm. Vienna was amazing. The weather was a bit questionable on one day, a but like uh, today, yeah. we take it. It's <laughs> yeah. the same here today. And they have to take it as well, yeah. Yeah. And there's still a crowd here on hand. They've got their umbrellas sitting down watching and cheering, yeah. and uh, it's fantastic. The atmosphere is always good. Uh, we love to see that as they're getting ready on stage. A quick block change to make sure that everything is ready to go for our next two heats. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've just ah, okay. been told well, the heat is done. <laughs> Let's blab on then, huh? <laughs> so the event schedule probably uh, is something we want you to see again and not forget about. Uh, we know we've yeah. we've talked about it before, but uh, there are so some much great coming and happening in the next days. Autumn. So summer might be over, but the sun is shining for steel yep. timber sports. Uh, not only today, but also on the fourth of September, where we got the German Pro Championship coming up. The tenth of September. We'll be in Switzerland for the Swiss Pro Championship and also in Switzerland for the European Nations Cup. We've talked about that today. Yeah. Dry, I know this is what, one of your absolute favorites. That's one of my favorites. It's great. Uh, and not long from then, on the 28th of October and the 29th of October, we're going to see the world elite uh, right around the corner in Gothenburg. We've got the Team World Championship and the Individual World Championship coming up. And of course, now we are ready for our next heat. Maybe you can hear Anders screaming on stage for a good reason, because Felixia Bank and Tova Njastad are ready to go. Yeah, Felixia Bank's had a bit of a rough day here today, starting off with the stocks on a DQ and then uh, getting a fairly good time. I mean, she got a personal best in the single buck and, and uh, that was a nice step up for her. So I shouldn't say rough day. So let's see how she manages to stand up against Tova Neustadt in the underhand chop here. Now Tova Neustadt looking at uh, her personal best, 115.27. So uh, for her, she's going to try and make an improvement here. First place at the Nordic Elmia Women's Cup in 2022. So she's got pedigree right now. <clears throat> Just waiting for the final go-ahead from Competition Control Center to Bart Janssen, and here we go. Okay. Right. Athletes ready. ready. Stand, Stand to your to timber. timber. Three, Three two, two, one, one go. go! Oh, that was great timing. Yeah, if I, Felixia Bank, she really read that well, started the axe movement, and then drove in just at the go. And Big again, risky, you can see those really thin shoes. You would just... Oh. And very, very close to the uh, step and the footholds there. 
Neustadt wearing the distinct pink sneakers. If we get a foot position from her, you can see her drivers going into the block. And again, for Felixia, it's going to be a best time no matter what, unless she's DQ'd here. And uh, for Tova, it's about trying to beat her previous best time of 1.15.27. Uh, and they have to be done in under 1 minute 30. Felixia moving over to the other side of her block now and starting the drivers on the front side. Tova still working on the first side of her block, looking to go a bit deeper perhaps and not have to do so much work as she, she switches over to the other side now. Felixia just passing the one minute mark, but it looks like it might be getting close for her as she's getting some nice drivers into that block. Remember, they've got to be done in under one minute 30. Oh, they're both going to make it. They're both going to make it. Come on. Crossing the fingers here. No personal best for either of them, or for Neustadt at least. Ah, a bit of a hiccup Accuracy there. Accuracy issues now for uh, Felixia as uh, she's losing power, as she's getting tired, and that's it. DQ for both of them, unfortunately. And you can see the way that uh, Felixia is pushing this axe out in front of her instead of above her, that uh, she just doesn't have the power anymore and she's cutting straight in and not at an angle, but she does finally get through the block. Unfortunately, it's a DQ for both of these women on stage right now. And Naza Norbeck, she's going to be a bit unhappy because yeah. she just missed out on that time. And that, of course, would have given her a, a lot of points. Okay, but, ladies and um, unfortunately, in this case, we have three DQs so far with Juliana Enfalt and Alvin moving still coming. Yeah, yeah, that's what I here meant. That's passion. We have a different problem. We have no power. All right, so just uh, plugging our tablet back in here, running out of power. Uh, <laughs> we just saw a DQ for both of those women that were on stage, which is an unfortunate situation. But you can see how after a while you get tired and then the ax Just like our tablet, you know, you, yeah, yeah, you, you start to lose the power, right? <laughs> the ax comes out in front instead of going up above for a better power driver into the block. And also the angle of the hits becomes more and more straight and you're not getting clean cuts. So one more final heat to find out who's going to take home the win here at the Nordic Women Cup 2022. Juliana Einfeld versus Iron Übing. That's our heat number three. Talked with Alrin earlier on and uh, asked her how her hand was doing. She showed me the healed skin oh. on top of that gash that was in her hand. And, uh, and she can bend and, uh, and work the fingers. And she said she was surprised that the... The skin had grown back in so quickly, so it's nice that she doesn't have a hole in her hand anymore, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, she'll be able to grip that axe. And any previous pictures from Vienna, you see that her whole hand was more or less wrapped up in bandages and stuff. She is very, very strong, though. She has the national record for underhand chop for Germany with a 38.79. So uh, look for her to get going heavily in this drive. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. A little bit of a delay by Alrin to get started, and now the women are in sync with each other, but uh, Ubing starting to keep the flow going. A little bit of a stick for Alrin as uh, she got that axe caught, and you can see here some nice accurate drivers oh, wow, the for power. Juliana. Doing a great job there. Whew. How smooth is that one side there? She, she switches over to the other side of her block. Alrin still on the first side. Huge power, but that's causing her problems as she got that axe stuck and gingerly moves over to the other side. We're not going to see a DQ in this heat, trust me. I don't me. think so. And Juliana at the moment has the advantage, having moved over to the other side of her block about four or five strokes ahead of Alrin, but this is where Alrin becomes stronger later in the heat. Whoa, oh, wow. Juliana! Personal by Juliana with a 48.04. She absolutely blasted her previous personal <laughs> best of a 54.32, and Alrin... More than six seconds, wow. I might have spoken too earlier, jinxed her. I feel bad now because uh, 
She's struggling on the back side of this block, and normally she's stronger in the second half of her cuts. And there you go, 113.86. That's going to be a disappointment for her. She knows she can do better. I'll have to ask her how she felt with that one later on. I don't know what yeah, the answer is going to be. Yeah, but she still showed us a smile. She's just a, yeah, such she's a happy that person. Yeah. person. She's just chill, relaxed, and happy-go-lucky. And, and she can be happy because uh, in all over points, uh, okay, she is gentlemen. the one with the most. You know, the good. 13 points for Alrun, uh, 12 for Juliana. And then we have uh, Tova and Yasted, Azenopek and uh, Felixia Bank. Well, there you go. That's going to uh, be our final heat for underhand chop for our women as uh, our stage crew, which we have not mentioned at all today. Oh, we, we have to give props to our oh, stage yeah, crew. Totally. Those guys come out there, they change the blocks, they clean the stage. This is such an important aspect of this event because without them, that stage would just be unsafe to work on. Oh yeah, they're, they're like a Formula One team. They're doing yes. a fantastic job. Absolutely. And here we have the underhand chop results with the Juliana Einfeld. Uh, giving us her personal best and uh, showing us a fantastic time, 47.83. Yep. Uh, Ubing also making it within uh, the time limits, maybe not the time that she expected, but uh, still claiming four points yep. and uh, no points for Nordbeck, Bank and Njestet. Giving us a final result. Here comes the overall ranking. And there we have to say this, of course, will be different uh, to the Nordic Women Cup result at Correct. the end of the day. But uh, yeah, over to you. Here's so Alrin Ubing with the uh, 13 points, just one point behind is Juliana. So, I mean, a great event for both of these it's women fantastic. who have really showed some skill out there. Uh, but it gets tiring. Come on, let's be honest. For everybody, you know, you're swinging an axe, you're pushing a saw, you're cutting and you're chopping all day long. It is tiring and your muscles and your body just get worn out after the day is done. A great job, and of course, we want to talk to Ayrun, who claimed the most points today. Uh, over to you, Anders. Thank you. I'm with Ayrun Ubring, who is the winner of the women's division. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you looked very even in all events. Did you feel comfortable? Yes, I felt really comfortable. I'm so lucky to got this invitation to come here to spend a nice time in Sweden. And this competition, it's really nice here. Thank you. And uh, you struggled with the axe. Is the axe something you need to improve? I need to improve it, but I had a flu last week, so uh, my power is not, has not quite come back. And, but I'm happy with it. It's okay. Your power was enough to win the women's division. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, All right. What, what nice. a great character, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. I think uh, she's probably more humble uh, and humbled <laughs> by the, being able to be invited to the event here. So congratulations to Alrin for doing a great job today, amassing the most points and uh, the top performance of the day. Absolutely. That was uh, great stuff. We're going to have the winner's ceremony coming up right after uh, our rookies and our intermediates. Yep. We're going to go for the underhand chop now as well. And um, yeah. We're going to find out who's going to claim most of the points in the rookies competition in just a moment. And this is really, for the rookies, this is a big deal because this is the tell-all for these guys. This is where the positions can change drastically because there are pretty close scores between the top, uh, I'm going to say, four or five guys. We're looking at, like, in fifth place, 18, uh, moving up till the top spot of uh, 25 points. So it's all open at the moment for the top five guys. Yeah, and you've just seen our uh, six heats. Um, that's going to be very interesting to follow as well. Yep. And of course, the overall standing. Who's going to still go for gold, silver, and bronze? We've got uh, Konicek here together with Bjorns uh, with 25 points right on top of uh, the table. Carlsen, 21 points. Vargas at 20. Pedersen even with 18. And Anderson with 16 points as well as Staff with 16 points. And Berglund with 15. Yeah, uh, it's th close. Still within, uh, within reach, and let's not forget this is the Nordic Rookie Cup. So that means at the end of the day, we're only going to see uh, Konicek and Vargas Reiter as guests. Correct. They might be on top of the table, but they will be not on top of the podium because these are the Nordic uh, competition. This is the Nordic Championship. Correct. And um, yeah, well, 
that's what's going to be yeah, doing all the maths and taking a curse on again. Got some some action coming your way. Nevertheless, the underhand chop for the rookies is up next, and it sounds with to all me the like athletes. They're still setting up the blocks, and uh, again, I, I mentioned the stage crew from earlier on. We always oh. say props to the stage crew because they do such a good job. Uh, why is it dangerous? Because there's all that stuff that's lying around. You can't leave it lying around up there. As we get set up for our next heat, and the first heat in the underhand shop for our rookies. You just heard it. Axel Björk and Albin Nielsen will be competing in this first heat. And they all desperately need those points. So these two guys don't have personal best logged into the system yet. So uh, as long as they are within the time limit here today, they will log some personal bests in. And I'm uh, crossing my fingers that that's actually going to be the case for them. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Go! So there's a view of Albin Nielsen with the number 11 block and Axel Björk on the other side. Nice clean cuts, nice clean drivers so far. It's uh, Björk actually uh, who's getting the most slabs coming off of his block so far. Yeah, Nielsen now has finally a big one that came off of his and you can see both of them trying to get those power drivers in and that piece of wood that's just hanging there could pose problems if it gets in the way of the axe and a couple of drivers but it looks like Nielsen's got some nice accurate hits there let's see who's going to move to the other side of their block first as they get to the 45 second mark on their time it's going to be Nielsen with a little bit of a balance check there as he moves around to the other side and starts working on the front side of his block facing the audience. Björk now moving over to the other side as they just passed the one minute five second mark so they've got 25 seconds or 20 seconds now to go. Trying to get some support from Anders and the audience up there to get these guys through within the time limit. That's going to be a tough one now with six seconds to go. It doesn't look like they're getting very close to being deep into that front side. And that is all she wrote. DQ time exceeded for both of these guys as they get stopped right away. And you can see they're both breathing heavy. There is a lot going on in the mind of an athlete, but physically as well. Okay, and both of those things together can Do really be tired. Out of time. So our first heat results in two DQs. And that, of course, is something we do not like to see, nope. but these things happen. And, and of course, those logs, I mean, they are big and 90 yeah. seconds is not a long time, trust it's me. It's not. It's not a long time when you think about the amount of time it takes to go to the washroom and take care of your business. I mean, some of these guys <laughs> cut through a block faster than that happened. <laughs> For okay. sure. Weird example. <laughs> no details, uh, please. But, uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, yeah. it's, it's, it's a process and uh, it's the experience and we've been harping on it all day long. I know, blah, blah, blah. But it really plays a huge role in the fitness of these guys and, and being able to keep that pressure and that power and that speed and that pace up throughout an entire day of all of this. And not to forget that before the competition actually went on stage, these guys were training and testing blocks in the background. So there's a lot going on on a day like today. And we're off to the next heat. We keep on rolling. Anton Lindberg versus Espen Pedersen. Personal best with uh, Pedersen, 51.55. I'm curious to know how Anton manages here. I mean, he is a long, lanky kid as well. Is uh, he going to be able to use that to his advantage? Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Athlete, Athlete ready. ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. A right, nice start by Espen Peterson as he gets the first couple of drivers in and slabs out some very nice pieces. Lindbergh actually has a nice style right off the hop. You could see that. 
Uh, oh, a step down by Espen Peterson. Got to be careful there that he makes sure he's back on block and in secure position before he swings, but he moves to the other side. Lindbergh doing a very good job on the first side of his block. Now he needs to move to the other side and start cutting through. He's very deep, but he's done a good job. So using his long legs and arms to his advantage, but now you can see he's getting a bit tired and he's not bringing the axe up as high. He's bringing it more out in front and the difference there between him and Peterson in the style. Peterson with a personal best of 41-42. Nice, nice. And Lindbergh should have a time here that will give him a personal best if he can get through in the next 25 or 35 seconds. Let's see if he can do it. We're crossing our fingers for the young man. Just past the minute mark and he's getting close. Steps down, gets back up, sets himself up again. The balance is so important on top of that block. He's almost oh, he's there. He's gonna do it, he's gonna, he's gonna do go it, come on. He's driver to get yes. He's done it with a personal best of 111.36. Oh, even a personal best, how about that? Yep, that's a great job by Anton Lindbergh. He clocked himself a time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both gets a cut. So there well you go, done. personal best for both of these guys and Espen Peterson pulling a face for the audience as he enjoys that one very much so. So underhand chop, Espen Peterson with the time to beat for now with a 41.10 and Anton Lindbergh with the next fastest time over a minute but he's got himself a personal best, that's the first time that he's going to record a personal best so now Lovely. he's got a marker that he can work <laughs> towards beating oh no pressure there yeah no pressure now he's at got all. the marker he's going to keep on going from there exactly. two dqs uh, two personal bests uh, a lot of drama in this uh, first discipline um let's not forget uh, the world championships coming up yes i'm looking forward to that the world champions is going to be here in gothenburg uh this time around though we're going to be in the stadium in gothenburg oh, and yeah. that's a big deal because we can fit a ton of people in there, and there will be a ton of people coming for the World Championships. It's going to be a great event. I'm yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, it's always something very special and great atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to give you a bit of a feeling what you can expect, watch this. So make sure you get your tickets to the Partilla Arena for the World Championship 28th place. and 29th of October. It's going to be legendary. Um, 28th and 29th of October, that's mm -hmm. the dates uh, for the Team World Championship and of course the Individual World Championship. Uh, we just saw a beautiful teaser, they go for the goosebumps again. But that's going to be rocking, that's going to be just rocking and a rolling, just like we had uh, in, in 2019 in Prague. And yeah. some other competitions still coming up this uh, end of summer, beginning of autumn. I mean, that's the perfect time for, for Steel Timber Sports. Yeah, September is a busy month for Steel Timber Sports, as you've just seen from the schedule there. Today, we're here in uh, just outside of Gothenburg, actually. And uh, we've got the next heats locked and loaded on stage. So there's still more action today and there's still more action in September. So plenty to see and do in the next month. Edwin Berglund taking on Johan Staff. Oh, you, you can see Anders and here Anders getting loud and excited. Uh, two personal bests that would indicate uh, that we're not going to see a DQ and that's what we're hoping for. Hoping for, but Edmund Berglund is a 119 personal best, so he's really on the cusp of being close to, uh, uh, you know, getting kicked out there. So as long as he can keep his cuts clean and consistent, 
We should see him with the time logged in. Same for Johan Staff. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Right away, a big stick for Johan Staff on his first driver and his third driver as he switched over to uh, the left hand. Berglund looking pretty good on the first few hits for him as well. Exhaling on each driver, that's good to just release that power a little bit more. You don't want to hold your breath in these situations because that just builds up the lactic acid in your muscles and makes it even harder to keep going. Staff has moved over to the other side of his block quite quickly though. Now Berglund doing the same thing as he starts the drivers on the front side of his block. Staff opting to show his butt off to the audience today as he finishes off his second side. Berglund, couple of nice big slabs coming off. His cuts are nice. Oh yeah, and Staff with a personal best of 45.85. We didn't see that one, but uh, saw the time stop and heard the block fall as <laughs> yeah, he'll finish, keep yeah. an eye on Berglund, who appears like he might even get a personal best time as well as he's getting close to cutting through there. He needs to be careful and clean, and he does it. Yes, yes, yes. There's some relief as well for him as he steps away from that with a deep breath and knows that he's got a personal best and some improvement has been made. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Both get the good. Yes, sir. So what does that mean for the underhand chop at this very moment? Two DQs, four personal bests, and Pedersen and Staff up on top of the board. Very close to each other as mm -hmm. well in the 40-second range, or just over it there. So uh, really nice runs so far, and always like to see those personal bests with... Two more heats to go, I believe. Nope. Three more. Three There's going to be a yes. single man heat with Lucas Vagasreiter being alone on stage. So next up will be Bo Anderson, your favorite, up against <laughs> Adam Björns. Adam so, had a fantastic single buck earlier on. That was just a really, really nice best, run so, from him. Uh, there's quite a lot we can expect from this man, especially competing uh, mm -hmm. with Bo Anderson, who has been surprising us all day long. So, yeah. And Adam Bjorns has got a uh, great personal best time, 34.44. So uh, hopefully we'll see improvement there. That's a bit like Rafa Nadal getting himself prepared, totally focused. Okay. Pulling the shirt. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, perfect timing there. Oh, nice hits by Bo as he's got some good slabs coming off there quickly. And now the pace is starting to increase oh, for Bo Anderson. Look at that. Anderson. Björn's already on the other side. Anderson working on the back side, slabbing oh, out that's nicely. Be Anderson's a personal good. best. <laughs> a personal best of 32.89. Björn's trying to get through that block of his as well. Wow. And he's done it in a 41.32. Didn't get his personal best, but he's got a solid time. So Bo Anderson is at the top of the underhand chop results with Adam Björn sitting in third place there. Great result for both of these guys, and it's Adam Björn who moves to the top of the overall rankings with two more heats to okay, go. Ladies and gentlemen, both get the good. So for the moment, it's Anderson taking home 11 points and Björn's 10. But of course, we've got three more competitors uh, still to, to compete. And this might change like it has been changing so it's many times. It's been changing so many times. It's anybody's guess what's going to happen out there on stage. But Björn's at the moment, so overall, uh, up front uh, with 35 points before Bo Anderson. So I, I think <laughs> there's still... <laughs> 
<laughs> Anything can <laughs> no happen out there. No time to it's, make any it's predictions. It's been crazy Absolute. all day long. No more predictions. Absolutely not. Uh, maybe one prediction. You're going to see uh, a nice video now from one of our partners, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. Yeah, perfect timing, a perfect timing yep. uh, as we return. <laughs> Jumped into a bit of German there. Yeah, yeah, because Lukas Markus, <laughs> the Austrian, has just entered the stage yes. and uh, is fully motivated. He is our next heat because he is competing all by himself. And uh, there we go with his details. His personal best is 22.82. So um, That's a solid personal best. Let's see if yes, he can pull totally. that off today or better. And he's ready to go. He's motivated and focused. Here we go, Lukas. Okay. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Nice timing on the start by Lucas Vargas Reiter. You could see the accuracy of his blows and the quickness that he is driving that axe into the block. My word, is he motivated. Barely getting the axe stuck at all. Just one time, really small, and then switch to the other side very quickly. Oh, but a couple of big sticks there on that side as he tries to get those slabs out but you can see how smooth those cut sides are oh, as he's so oh, oh my god that's a great time by lucas 25 72 as he got through there a little <laughs> bit quicker than i thought he was going to get through there on that second yeah, side the, great the, job though those last blows they they were making the difference and that would mean he has the best time of the day okay ladies and gentlemen good good so and with adjustment, good. there's a 25-22, so even faster, and that's the best time of the day, like you said, Marcus. So here we have the confirmation, Vargas Reitzer, Anderson, Björns. That's the top three at the moment, but still two athletes yep. to come, Robin Konicek and Edwin Carlsen. So last heat should be coming up on deck here any second. Like you said, uh, Robin Konicek, Edwin Carlsen, uh, again, Two guys that are very evenly matched up here. 
as we look at their times, Edvin Carlson slightly the advantage when we look at the personal best, but as we've seen all day long, hmm. when guys are motivated by knowing who's next to you and their personal best time, that can help you along absolutely, the way. Absolutely, absolutely. And that could be a good thing for Robin Konacek, who is very, very solid in this discipline. And all the top athletes so close together at this very moment. Mm -hmm. As we go into the deciding heat of the competition. Watch the axe speed of Edvin Carlson when he gets going here, though. He should be moving that axe quite quickly. Okay, we just had a, uh, a brief stoppage there for whatever reason. Not quite sure, but uh, Bart Janssen has gone off stage to check something out with one of his judges on the side in competition control center. Oh, that's interesting. That's where they have the, the video camera uh, screens for a quick check on the side there. Let's see what's happening here. Some extra drama for us in this final heat of the rookies competition. Okay, here we go. Looks like we're official this okay. time. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Go! All right, right away you oh, wow. see oh, wow. Carlson with that quick axe, but Konacek keeping pace with him right away. The accuracy both of these guys have is incredible. <laughs> Moving over to the other side, a quick step down by Carlson that might make a small disadvantage against Konacek, who's very good here, but Carlson keeping those very close to the knee here as he cuts in, as he's through in a personal no way. 23 43 no way. Konacek with a big stick two times back to back, three times now as he's trying to get through, swings it and does it in a 31-13. But that is an amazing time for Edvin Carlson. That puts him atop the rankings for the underhand chop with the <laughs> fastest time of the day there. But Konicek can be pleased as well. Both good to good. Because on the, the overall rankings, he has achieved the most points, a total of 34. And of course, Adam Björns and Edwin Carlson, the top two with 32 points. And this is just a time thing now between the two men to find out who's going to be the Nordic champion. So let's take a look Ooh. at the results from the underhand chop. As you saw there, a 23.09 from Edwin Carlson. But. He did have a DQ in the stock saw earlier on, so that's going to cause problems when we're looking at the overall. And remember, our guest athletes, Vagasreiter and Konacek, won't be on the podium today, so we'll see who the next closest athlete is in the final results. And that's going to be Adam Björns. He is your Nordic rookie champion. So great job by Adam Björns to be consistent and solid throughout the day. And it was that stock saw that put him over in the end. And it was that those both of them have 32 points. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. He had the faster times, and that's uh, what made the yeah. difference and at the at end the, of the day. At this point, it's the stock saw in the beginning. Uh, Adam was quick with the 11 points, the full pull, and Edvin Carlson had the DQ, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, let's go up and get an interview it, with Adam on yeah. stage. Could it be any closer? No, it could not. 32 points apiece, you know... Um, just both celebrating steel timber sports and you become the Nordic champion because yeah. you were just that little bit faster at the end of the day. Fantastic. And uh, we've just been told that, that Adam is running to stage yeah, now for the winner's interview. So <laughs> yeah, so. I, I pulled the trigger a bit too soon on that one. Sorry, folks, but uh, we'll hear yeah, from Adam the man, shortly. He's the man we want to talk to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's, he's taking on the title. And Anders, I, I think we're ready to rock uh, over to you. Yes, we're here with Adam Bjorns. Congratulations, Adam. Thank you very much. Very, very close. I think the same points as well uh, as, as others. Uh, did you feel safe at any point? A little bit, but it was uh, very disappointed that uh, Carlson DQ'd at the uh, stock saw. But that's, uh, that's uh, timber sports. The DQ costs you too much. Yeah, it does. And after this, wh where is your aim? When are we going to see you in the pro division? I don't know, actually. <laughs> But you're the Nordic rookie champion now. Yeah, thank you very much. Congratulations, Adam Jones. <laughs>
a man of few words, uh, a How humble modest, winner here. Shy, yeah. Fantastic. But, but he gave us the thumbs up at the end. There you go. What a character. Yeah, Amazing. But like we said, we're going to have to teach these guys how to celebrate and really put the uh, the flex on and uh, yeah, yeah, play yeah, with yeah. the camera. But you know what? <laughs> It's all good in the hood that uh, he's taking it down, huh? Yeah, I know. What a bunch of nice guys. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Great stuff. And, yeah. and you, you saw the high five. You know, it's been very close competition. Everything fantastic. Yeah. Speaking about the competition, we saw a little bit on, on the competition wood earlier on. I mentioned starting off in the show that you're seeing a lot of sawdust and a lot oh, of yeah. stuff that's being thrown around on stage. And you, you might wonder, hey, what's going on here? You're wasting wood. This is totally ecologically unfriendly, but it's not really the way, is it? Definitely not, and uh, we'll show you more about sustainability right now. We as still Timber Sports pride ourselves that all wood is sustainably grown, harvested, and recycled to minimize the overall amount of wood processed. Firstly, this popular wood is grown on certified plantations. Secondly, the white pine for our sawing disciplines is only sourced from certified forest management. After all our steel competitions, all the spent wood is collected and recycled right down to the wood chips and sawdust, which for example, is converted into renewable energy in the form of wood pellets for biomass. We quest to find certified partners. This ensures that all newly planted trees are nurtured and managed, promoting maximum efficiency and sustainability for the future conservation of our valuable forests. Therefore, as you can see, with good harvesting practices and good management with silver culture, the ground is quickly replaced by new trees or could even be used for arable for farmers and future rotations. We know the winners of the women's competition. We know the winners of the rookies competition. One more Need coming the intermediates up. Now. <laughs> yeah. Let's see who's still competing. Here are the heats, the final heats, and you just heard it. Uh, Bert gave us will be the first to compete by himself in heat number one. Then we've got Kim Wolke and Johannes Segerstedt, followed by heat number three with Klaus Magnus Halvorsson and Emil Svensson. And finally, heat four, Peter Eriksson versus Viktor Klamo. That's our heats, that's the underhand chop, that's the final decision in the intermediates. Here we go. And as I said, Bart's been really, really consistent throughout the day. He's got 12 points in the overall standing at the moment with a good solid underhand chop. Like with any of the other events, he can jump up in the overall ranking significantly. So he's okay. going to be motivated to do well Epic here. And ready. for the intermediates, Stand this is really to your the tell all discipline. Three, two, one, go! Good start by Bart right away as he. Gets into that block with some nice, accurate drivers. Pretty wide. A little slip there. Not massive. It was barely noticeable, but it was there nevertheless. A couple of slabs coming off. He should switch to the other side fairly quickly here, I would deep say. Deep into the wood already. Yeah, he's deep. Yeah. Just like uh, well, changed. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Deep thought. Here we go. <laughs> deep cut. And now he moves to the other side, just passing the 30-second mark. A little bit surprised that over earlier on a couple of guys in the uh, preparation tent on the sidelines waiting for Bart to finish his as they watch on I'm actually quite surprised that uh, it's taken him that long there but uh, he's got a personal best of 52 34 and you know what he seems super pleased with yeah, that the reaction yeah hey, absolutely pleased with that great job by bart Givers. but how much potential is in that guy tons of potential I, I, I'm he's sure he been doesn't super know. consistent all day long good, good. Yeah. so very very good job by bart Givers to show that uh, he is a solid solid competitor Fantastic and guy. Uh, and you know like you say there's a ton of potential in that man and I think he doesn't even realize how good he is or how good he could be or at least he's just not showing it to us huh? <laughs> maybe <laughs> we'll ask him right afterwards <laughs> all right next up we have Kim Volke going up against Johann Siegerstedt that's our next heat in the blocks you sound like a Swede a sweet Swede. Yeah, well, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe in my case, a Swede that eats too much sweets. 
Okay, let's get ready for Kim Volker on Seeger State. All right, so both of these guys have personal okay. bests that are well above the Athletes winner's minute ready. mark. At least Stand in Kim Volker's case, 121. So he'll Three, definitely want to improve. Two, Here we go. One, go! Could see very gingerly hits from from from, from Siegerstedt there, as he's really trying to stay on the accurate tip. And Kim Volke now starting to pick up the pace as we see a couple of slabs forming and waiting to come off that block. Good job, nice driver there. He got nice and deep. A good chip came out. He'll switch to the other side any second now. Yep. There he goes, moving to the other side of his block. Siegerstedt, meanwhile, has just stepped over about three strokes behind Kim Volke. Kim Volke looking good as they're coming up on the 42nd mark. Could we see personal best for both of these guys? Siegerstedt still being very accurate with his hits, but not throwing in much power there. Big stick for him. Volke not as fast on the second side. Siegerstedt's got a good one. He's got oh, himself a personal yes. best of 54.85. And I think what he did is he went accurate and deep on the first side and didn't have as much work to do on the back side. Kim Volke trying to get through there. He should be done any second now. That block is wiggling and waggling. And there he goes through with a personal best. Well done, 107.33 for Kim. Not bad at all. Three personal bests of the three athletes. Love to see that. If it could be personal best across the board, I would be happy for all of those guys. Absolutely. Ah, uh, but there's there discussion. Like did he cut into the foothold? If he did, that's going to be a DQ. Uh, uh oh. Let's see. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, stand two. Okay, stand one. DQ. Good football. Uh, good football. Sorry. That's a shame. That's a shame. All right, that's unfortunate there for Kim because he cut into the foothold, and that is a safety aspect as well, making sure that uh, the position of the feet and those marked footholds are not cut into, and uh, being sure that all those drivers are going in the correct spots in between the feet. So that's a DQ for Kim. Even though he got the personal best, it was short-lived. Uh, and for him, that's no points in this discipline. That's going to be disappointing for him for sure. But, but you say it's, it's, it's a safety topic. Is that, does it mean if you just touch the line, you're already having a DQ? Or? It's pretty close to that. I mean, these guys are very, very strict about the, the footholds because, you know, your feet are on there and then there's maybe a three centimeter piece that's just beside your foot where uh, it marks the foothold and then the cut lines for your actual cut. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big piece of strict uh, rule here that they don't mess around with because of the safety aspect otherwise people will start pushing to the outside to the outside to the outside and then yeah okay you got a problem and uh, not messing around with safety is one of our partners Ford enjoy it So here is heat number three. Klaus Magnus Halverson versus Emil Svensson. 
Klaus has had uh, a pretty rough day today. Single buck wasn't so solid for him. Standing block chop was a DQ. He was good in stock saw. Now he needs to be good in underhand chop as he is sitting dead last in the ranking. And meanwhile, Joha, or excuse me, okay. Emil Svensson sitting Athlete in second ready. place in the overall Stands ranking. He's been really consistent timber. throughout the day. Let's see how Three, he does here. Two, one, go! So Emil Svensson, my new sweet Swede, is uh, looking very good on those first few drivers. And he should be coming around to the other side any second now as uh, he's gone quite quickly through the first side with those first half dozen to 12, yeah, to a dozen shots as Halverson still working on the first side. He's going to opt to show off his backside to the audience when he decides to switch over, but he's got that axe stuck quite a few times. Oh my goodness! A season's best and personal best for Svensson with a 32-21. How about that? That How signs him up that? for the top spot in the overall rankings for the moment. There's one more heat still to go. Halverson struggling to get through on that backside. Will he have himself a personal best? It's not going to happen as he's past 50 seconds, but he wasn't that far off with a 55-19. But Svensson, when he counts most, yep. really delivering. The sweet Swede in it to win it now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both gets good. And that, of course, uh, is a clear message uh, to Ericsson and Klamo. It's all down to the last heat. <laughs> Let's take a closer it, look at it the. It really is. I mean, Ericsson and Clarmo are third and fourth respectively. So with good cuts here in the underhand chop, we we may have it uh, yeah, really, really close in the top three. We might even have a top three Swedish finish here. Um, Victor Clarmo with a 34.91 personal best as the two guys come out on stage now. Peter Eriksson with a 40-20 personal best, so hee hee. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know who's going to be shaking in his boots right now with a time to beat of 32? <laughs> That's Emil Svensson. Yeah, but he gave us a seasonal best just to show the others, hey guys, yeah, I'm, here. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. Yeah. I've, I've done my job, now it's up to you. So Eriksson, Klamo, Gave us Svensson. That's the top four at the moment, with uh, Ericsson and Klamo not having competed in this final heat yet. So, uh, a lot of okay. points still to be collected. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! All right, so. We'll see here how they can. Oh, adjust. he wants this, huh? Yeah, they both look at, look at that. Erickson really working that axe quickly. <laughs> Larmo gone deep on the first side there, switching over now. This guy has so much power. Yeah, Erickson's already on his side. I didn't see how many strokes ahead, but uh, getting close to the 32nd mark now. They got to beat 32. Doesn't look like it's gonna. Oh my goodness! A personal best for Ericsson at 32:26. Is he faster than Svensson? He okay. is not. Larmo with a 36:30. Let's see how that changes things oh, here. And like you predicted, top three are Swedish athletes. Oh my God. That is crazy, but it's going to be okay, Emil Svensson. Both gets a good. Oh, and Ericsson actually with change. Ericsson with change. Personal best season's best. So he has just moved to the top there. So he'll take those seven points and he'll push Emil Svensson to second place in the ranking in underhand chop. But let's <laughs> it's see how all that about changes <laughs> things in the overall because there's some points going on here that's going to switch things around. So in underhand chop, we've got three Swedes in the top three positions, Ericsson, Svensson, and Klarmo. And let me let's tell you, it's the top the three. Results. It's the same three, only in different positions with the final results. Yeah. your winner. Ericsson comes second place in Klarmo 
with a fantastic performance today in third place. There you go. So Svensson, Emil hey. Svensson in the top spot in the overall standings today for the Swedes in the intermediate division. What a fantastic result. He's had absolutely amazing. Svensson before Ericsson before Klamo. That's a uh, grande finale. Absolutely fantastic. Congrats yep. uh, to our winners and hopefully we'll get uh, the top man in an interview in just a few moments. Hopefully, but He's what a way so to finish nice. off the day. Three Swedes on the podium boom, for boom, the boom. intermediates. Well done, boys. Congratulations. Oh, and we're ready to go for the interview. Well, that was quick. Let's uh, do it. Anders, over to you. So we're here with the winner of the intermediate division, Oxy Emil. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very tight. Yeah, it was. Very exciting. And uh, you, did, you thought you had the underhand chop one uh, just before up to the final heat? Yeah, I thought that uh, I, I thought that uh, this this will stand, <laughs> but uh, um, twelve of <laughs> twelve hundreds of a second, and that is so close. So, uh, are you going to be reminding them about this all evening? Who is on top? You'll be pointing out to them that you're the Nordic champion. Yes, of course. <laughs> Congratulations, Nordic champion of the intermediate division. The sweet, sweet Emil. <laughs> yeah, just give us a shot top wave. of the spot there. Good job. But let's not forget uh, Victor Klamo having a DQ in the stock saw with Correct. a great yeah, time. Yeah. So he would have been one of those who yeah. might have changed things. And and that's we're back to the experience again. And well, he was fastest through. in the stock saw before the DQ came along. So there's your difference maker right there, folks. And how about that? I mean, those Swedes in this competition, intermediates. Wow. Yeah. Really impressing us. That was absolutely fantastic. And now we're slowly but surely getting ready for our three winners ceremony. We've got the women's competition, we've got the rookies and the intermediates. Yeah, stage needs to be prepared. That's going to take a couple of minutes here. And, uh, you know, it's been a fantastic event here. It's been a fantastic atmosphere as always. Bart just walking by our, uh, our position here, waving hi to him. Uh, speaking of his atmosphere, let's take a look at what the atmosphere can be like when the events really go off, like what we're going to see at the World Championship here in October. last night and the team's relay was unreal. Oh definitely be the noisiest crowd I've competed against the Shane Jordan's already over there. Yeah it's uh it, I'm actually kind of getting goosebumps thinking about it right now. The crowds here they were just just erupting. You feel the energy of the crowd. The crowd was absolutely electric. And it was so much noise and support. Yeah, doch, doch, das pushed on Rowan. My fan club is also there. Very passionate about uh, the country and yeah, the competitors. Yeah, it feels super. Oh my goodness, look at this! It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. But he's not giving up, he's looking good! Like such an adrenaline rush, it's an uh, amazing feeling. I can't wait for October. It's going to be amazing. Make sure to join us. Uh, yeah. it, it, <laughs> Tickets are still available. It's Don't just, slouch on this no, one, folks. No, really. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And you're going to love it. We're going to love it. And uh, nothing to, to miss out. Definitely no, not. Absolutely not. By the way, we don't want to miss out on uh, the winner's ceremony. And uh, I've been told 
The women are ready to rock. And uh, we can go on stage right now to find out uh, who's gonna get the reward. Brilliant performance all day. Come on to stage all together and we will be celebrating the winners in each division. All of us up together. It's always great to see those smiles. Yes. I mean, in competition, they are tough. Women up here first, and we'll friends, start out uh, with there. Right up So there. we have That's guest athletes here, Timber and we're going to start with the podium. The now the thing is, we can that only get on the podium stage, they help of the Nordic other, Championship they push if you are, in fact, a Nordic citizen, if you are from one of the Nordic countries. And, uh, so, and then on the podium, when it comes to the top three sport on stage, in the they're Nordic just that much better for it, and then they compete like animals on stage. It's amazing. the podium is from Denmark, Felixia Bang! So as these are the Nordic Championships 2022, we're going to see uh, Felixia Bank in third position. Because Alrun Übing and uh, Juliana Einfeld second place the most scores out of Wedges. Orsa Norberg! And that means silver goes to Orsa Norberg. As we await the new and Nordic, the Nordic champion. Women's Champion 2022, Tove Njostad. There she is, Tove Njostad. Congrats from our side. Of course, big congrats go out we to Juliana Einfeld and Aido Lübing. But uh, first of all, let's celebrate also our two brilliant guest athletes who are not in the Nordic Championships but doing exceptionally well in the competition. Ending up on 12 and 13 points, Juliana Einfeld, Iron Ubing, such, what an incredible performance. Do we have an anthem? Who will you start in Odin's best arena? Thank you, ladies. We are going to continue with the rookies division. Ladies, join us, please, on the rookies division. Please welcome onto stage. Please, let's have the rookies division all up. All of the rookies division is Robin Kornicek, Adam Björns, Edwin Carlson, Lukas Wagensreite, Bo Andersen, Espen Pedersen, Johan Stop, Edwin Bailun, Anton Lindberg, Axel Björk, Alben Nilsson. The entire rookie division. And in third place in the Nordic Championship representing Denmark, Bo Andersen. In second place in the Nordic Championship, at representing Sweden, Edwin Karlsson. And at the same points, 32 points, but ahead, ladies and gentlemen, the Nordic champion, Adam Björns. And we have the same situation here. Adam Jans is on top. We would have had on the podium as well had they been Nordic citizens because two points ahead. And <laughs> the Swedish anthem, ladies and gentlemen.
Ola Björnsen, Odisk Mästare. And let's also celebrate and thank you for coming and showing us how to do it. Robin Konicek and Lukas Wagesreiter, our international guests that would have been on podium had they only been Nordic. Thank you for coming, joining in and competing so well against each other. That excellent picture there. Thank you. And thank you to the rookies. All of you, excellent performance. And we move on to the intermediates. Welcome up onto stage, all of you. Emil Svensson, Peter Eriksson, Victor Karmo, Bart Gives, Johan Segerstedt, Kim Volke, Klaus Magnus Halvorsson. Welcome up to the scene. And on the podium, in third place, by the way, of 19 points. And ladies and gentlemen, a new world record in intermediate. Uh, single back, på tredje plats, Viktor Klarbo! Världsrekordet i intermediate, han trodde han var klar med det hela det han inte kan ju sätta världsrekord uppenbarligen i divisionen. Nu är han på väg tillbaka, Klarbo på väg tillbaka till toppen. Och på en andra plats i tävlingen, tre poäng för honom, mina damer och herrar, Peter Eriksson! Peter Eriksson, two points, three points ahead of Klarma. Klarma in the World Championship, the World Record there, but three points behind Peter Eriksson in second place. And two more points up to the winner, ladies and gentlemen. The Nordic Intermediate Champion 2022, Emil Svensson! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Swedish National Anthem again. Thank you. Please stay on the podium there and let's have all of the winners on the podium. The winners in each division. Uh, rookie winner, ladies winner, please join us on the podium as well. <laughs> winners, all winners on the podium. Please go. Po please stay on stage everybody on podium with the champagne. Oh. All the winners on the podium. Up for please Palani Samavonit. Oh, let's try and get on the podium, everybody. On the podium, everybody, for the photo up there. Trying, trying to get into the champagne. Here we are. It is. Champagne all over everybody! <laughs> One of the best results Fantastic ever. Celebration <laughs> the champagne shower with nine of this, people. We have seen the bottles. juniors. I we love it. have Fantastic. seen the ladies, the, the rookies, the ladies, the intermediates. This has been the start of an absolutely amazing day. All together, they are celebrating so much. And we are working our way up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us. We are working our way through this. This has been the rookies. This has been the ladies. The intermediate. And we're done for now. Thank you for being with us. We will be back at 4 o'clock 
for the big guns. Then it's time for the Nordic champion in the pro division. Who's going to the world championships? Be with us at 4 o'clock. <laughs> what a delightful way to start the day, huh? Yeah. Huh? And it's not, not, not over yet. No, there's one more big competition, the men's pro competition for the Nordic Championship coming up at 4 o'clock this afternoon. So that's in two hours or yeah, about that's two hours and 20 minutes. So make sure you join us again then. It's going to be a lot of fun. This was a busy day, but oh, yes. a very good day with a ton of that's action. It. Glad we were there with you for it. Hope you had a good time. See you in a bit.